Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It is us, Dragon's Greed Gaming. We got a full house tonight as we dive back in. It is episode 11, I'm pretty sure, of the Frontier War. Blaze of Glory, part two tonight. As uh, you can see, everyone is back. Eric has returned from his uh, gallivanting in uh, Horus Heresy. And we've got Matt playing Ogata tonight, so it's going to be, be some good shit. So, uh, as always, if uh, you haven't already, check us out over on Facebook for all the latest news on the show. We've been popping with a lot of announcements lately, a lot of stuff going on in the background. Check us out over on Spreaker, where we host the podcast, and leave us those five-star reviews on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and all that other good stuff to help praise the algorithm and speaking of algorithms subscribe on youtube if you haven't already uh, as we slowly begin to climb the numbers there and if you are a really big fan and you want to support us with uh, some good old cash money dollars check us out over on patreon we got a couple different tiers you can join be like our newest patron dalton join us join us at our great worm tier get yourself all sorts of cool shit including a uh, uh, actual play series of Warhammer Fantasy that is only exclusive to the patron members. And we do monthly posts, uh, of which I put one out today, talking about upcoming good news and stuff for the channel. By the time you see this episode, the news is already out there, uh, but we'll say it now. Scar and I have decided it is time to join forces. So the Neon Swamp and... Dragon's Greed Gaming are going to be unifying into one amoeba-like entity. And uh, Scar is going to be bringing his expertise with streaming. Uh, his Twitch channel, The Neon Swamp, is going to remain The Neon Swamp, but it's going to come under the Dragon's Greed umbrella. And we are going to start doing live streaming, uh, which might be going on by the time you're listening to this. But Scar is going to start off with some Monday night games. It's going to do some one-shots, starting off with a uh, one-shot of Forgotten Lands, and then uh, probably, I'm sorry, Forbidden Lands, uh, and then jump to a couple other RPGs until he decides uh, what he wants to run, and then we're eventually going to have, uh, I believe Adam is going to be running an RPG called Heart, uh, which was described to me as uh, people who suck and... Uh, eventually go mad as they have their sanity torn apart by the threads of reality or something to that nature so sounds good to me yeah and then uh we'll, we might start streaming this i don't know if not whatever comes after frontier war uh we'll definitely be streaming so we're hoping to eventually have at least three streams a week for you uh to keep things exciting and interesting all actual play stuff also it might have already happened by the time you listen to this, but if it didn't, we're going to be streaming Friday the 13th, the game, on <laughs> Friday the 13th. Oh, baby. And, and it's going to be so fucking good. So, uh, yeah, if you want to watch us dick around with that, maybe we'll do some Dead by Daylight in the future. And uh, there'll probably be some, at least one more thing. I think there's one more Friday the 13th this year before it's all over. So, I think in December. But, uh, yeah, so lots going on. Scar. We're happy to, to have you officially uh, as fi official partners in crime now, I guess. Excited. It's going to be good shit. The, dis the Discord server is already growing, and it's only been like two days. So, very, very good. Anyway, let's hop to it. we got a lot to do tonight. Uh, we'll start it off as always. Tell us who you are, who you're playing, anything else you want to tell the listeners. Eric, you're back tonight. What's going on? I am. Last uh, week I was, I got in four uh, 3,000 point games of Horse Heresy with my world leaders. Damn. How many? And a Three four. No, how many? Four 3,000. 3,000? 3, 3, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's usually about the minimum we play, um, unless we're Zone Mortalis. Uh, we did do a mega battle Friday night where I brought in all my, like, my Warhound and some Demon Engines. Cool. And then Saturday night we did um, like a Mega Zone Mortalis, where they do, um, they basically set it up as like two ships crossing each other, and then um, so there's like borders and attack uh, borders and defenders, 
Okay. And then you can like do broadsides at each other too if you have like control of the weapons. Um, but we did that as well Saturday night. So a lot of fun. Um, but glad to be back. Did you see? Uh, uh, you see the new? Uh, they announced. Um, well, chaos actually. The chaos stuff for Old World went on pre-order today. Yes. And then they announced uh, Empire and High Elves are after that. And yep. the Chaos Dwarves have made their glorious return to Blood Bowl. And oh, yeah, I did see uh, that. Oh, they're so fucking cool. So cool. Yeah, the, the road maps were a little sad. For they were. Harris they were Beatles. very, they were literally maps <laughs> that led to nowhere. But that led to nowhere. They're like, we're going we're gonna to be making more models next year. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Something will come out. Stuff will be released. Oh, oh you play 30K? There will probably be some Space Marines. You know, we'll see. Didn't they say, though, there's going to be a release every month for Horse Heresy? If I read that uh, correctly? I think they did. They did. Oh, but that's, they, that's pretty cool. I mean, that, yeah. I mean, we usually get, you know, small stuff. Um, hoping for some more troop choices, some close combat arms, maybe. Yeah. Cool. And uh, uh, who are you playing tonight? Tonight I am playing Lance Corporal Tagar, um, the Assault Breacher. And yeah, better to get back in. Cool. Well, we've got a few things that we're gonna do with your character first to wrap up uh, okay. last session, but we'll get to that in just a moment. We'll move it on over to our squad sergeant Adam, all the way from California. How are you tonight? Ah, doing, doing great. Doing great. Uh, you know, as I told you boys earlier, but now the podcast listeners, I had a little fun time over at the, uh, you know, your European wax area. So, yeah, <laughs> this is your, you your tea. podcast. Now? Hey, okay, man, we, we well. share everything. All right. We tell yep. the people want to know what's going on. This is your PSA on this podcast. Go, yeah. go get waxed. All right. Go, go be a man. Go get waxed. I, hey, man. If you're not waxing, you better be using a manscaper, okay? That's all I gotta say. All right. There you go. Manscaped. Responsor us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll be playing our, our Sergeant Schmidt. Uh, and he's got he's gonna probably have some few words for Tagar sometime this this podcast. Oh, okay. We'll see how that goes. Alright, can't wait for that. Uh, next to Adam on my screen, we've got Matt rolling in once again as our squad medic. What's up, man? I'm doing well. Coming back in with uh, Ogata, coming as, as the uh, the corpsman. Go to uh, try to save some lives and uh, you know try to not cause too much trouble or too much chaos. But we'll see. Um, Already yeah. running low on that nap relief. Well, <laughs> we show up and half of my supplies are gone before we even touch grid. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it was I, a uh, rough time. I read up. I read, yeah. up I read up on the rules for addiction, which we might have to get to oh, the session. No. So we'll see. Oh. We'll see. Oh, so that's the case. Get some more pills. <laughs> yep. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. You get a pill. You get a pill. You get a pill. <laughs> uh, Sean, tell us what's going on in your life. How's that bronchial infection? working out uh yeah uh, no idea if it actually is but uh things are going well uh i'm gonna be playing pfc roderick johnson who has a smart gun now and uh hopefully will survive his first deployment i've ever played with him so we'll fingers crossed uh i can't actually pull my token out for him um I don't know why. yeah let me let me see what's going on there i'll check for you you got cruise on there instead of uh Right. I, yeah. I do. I do. I'm. Uh, I'm a little because he's in. He's in a different folder. That's why. Yeah, yeah. The backup PCs. When, can you, uh, the main PCs. There you go. Can hurt. you? Can you move it? Yes. Weird. Then, okay. Yeah. That was, that was weird. Um. Uh, oh, before I forget. Uh, it, um, if you guys all go into your inventory, I noticed that the shoulder beam lamp. It, it's showing a weight because it's on your character sheet as a separate item, but it's part of your armor. So if you haven't already, change the weight to zero, because it, it, it's already incorporated into the armor. I also try to do that with any of your underslung weapons on your, if you have a pulse rifle. Uh, I believe uh, Ogata's got the flamethrower, but it won't, it's been changed to zero, but it's still showing up as a weight, and it's counting mm -hmm. weight, so I don't know why. But it shouldn't because it's part of uh, of the gun. It's already incorporated into that. So, um, but at least with the shoulder lamp, you can change that. So make sure you do because uh, there's probably going to be a lot of uh, 
a lot of carrying capacity issues this mission with the uh, the drums of explosives, which we'll get to in a moment. So, ready. Uh, Just it in the locker for now. The, uh, under the incinerator. If you if you want, yeah, yeah. Um, unless it's not really mattering, you know, if it's if it's making you cross your threshold, then it's a problem. But if not, it shouldn't matter. Uh, and then yeah, we've got Scar, my uh, my my co-host, I guess in a way now. Um. Uh, hi. I uh, yeah. Uh, no pressure. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, Chris already covered it, uh, the big news, but I uh, actually, by his suggestion, started playing Days Gone. And, oh um, yeah. Yeah. I'm right I'm I'm few hours into it. I don't know why it got shit on so much. It's not that bad. No, it's it's, it's, it's great. You know, it's it's gotten a cult following now, where people are like, "Give us a sequel." Right. Um, I think it's yeah. just it didn't it didn't do great at launch, and then over time people were like actually this game's really fucking good. So it probably yeah, was maybe a it was getting buggy, yeah. But... There's apparently a movie in the works. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, we know how that's gonna go. I mean, <laughs> uh, well, it, the bar is pretty low. Uh, and yet, more, uh, just when you thought Mario right. couldn't set it lower, like the '90s Mario. Borderlands came across and apparently uh, <laughs> made it even lower. Screw the um, uh, yeah. All right. And who are you playing tonight? I'm playing Private First Class O'Connell, um, and I am the squad's still only rifleman. Uh, so I kind of do a little bit of everything. All right. Wonderful. Um, well, I am your host, the great unclean one. I have, uh, what did I do this week? Not a lot. Um, it's been kind of busy with work. But uh, I finished cleaning almost all the models for Dead by Daylight, so we're getting ready to start cranking through painting those. And now I'm deciding whether or not I should work on Chaos stuff or Empire stuff for Old World, because I want to do both, but I don't have the time to do both. And, uh, I don't know. There's less models to paint in the Chaos Army, so we might go that route. But... But I'm going to have to buy Chaos models. I don't have to buy any Empire models. I will. I don't have to, but I will. I kind of have to, because it's Empire. But we'll see. Did you see that new, uh, the new stuff for the Stormcast, Eric? That fucking Griffin? Oh, man. That, that is going to have a place. Models over there. Yeah, that's going to have a place in an Empire army. And I think, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, there are two models for the Empire that... I need to get my hands on. One is a special character that was only in 8th edition, so probably he's probably not coming back. Okay. Very hard to find because he was such a limited print. But the War Wagon. I had one back yeah. in the day. It was only around in 5th edition. It had yeah. rules like Trial Rules in 6th edition. was never made official. And if you read the blog or the post they put out really carefully, they mention like, oh... If you want to grab your war wagons and blah blah blah, and I'm like, oh my god, is the war wagon gonna come back? That would be so cool. It, it, they brought him back a couple different like forge roll stuff that I think they were going to as well. Like, yeah, we'll see. Wolves and and the cast cooks. They are. They are. Oh, okay. Um, and one of the old forge rolled event models, event skin walls they did. No shit, I didn't even know there was one. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I missed out on the Forge World stuff. I didn't really get into it at the time, and I, I wish I did, but back then, it it was never really explained to me, like, what Forge World for Warhammer was. The 40k stuff was obvious, but the Warhammer stuff was never... And it was always like, make sure to ask your opponent if it's okay. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that the, uh, the, the campaign books they started doing got shelved after one of them, it just, what a disaster. So what a missed opportunity, but... Anywho... Uh, let's play some Alien. A lot of cool shit yeah. going on tonight. So, alas, we left. The group of you had returned to the Tamba Tam after your mission on uh, Azura Colony. And uh, you had a variety of uh, events and activities that had happened. We did some downtime events. I finished filling out the D66 chart for a wide variety of interesting things. And, uh, Eric, we're going to go back in time about four or five days in-game to uh, in between the time between that mission and this current mission. And we're going to see what has happened to Tagar. So, first off, I rolled for your downtime event, which was that you had spotted 
one of the other squad members doing something against regulations. Um, I'm trying to find the exact terminology here. Here we go. Uh, the Marine sees another Marine doing something against regulation. GM's choice as to the severity or legality. They must pass a mobility versus observation roll to see if they are noticed. So I rolled randomly out of all the NPCs in the company, and it just so happened to turn out to be Sean's backup character, who is currently on this mission because uh, Cruz is still injured from his shot foot. Uh, so you noticed uh, PFC Broderick Johnson, um, and uh, you failed on your mobility roll, or he failed on his uh, one of the two. But anyway, you both saw each other, so he knows that you saw him. And you saw him dealing in some contraband that he was selling. I believe it was like recreational drugs, like weed, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. my question is, what does, uh, what does uh, Tagar do with that information at that point? And does he do anything in the days after that? Oh, knowing that he's going to be going out into the field with us now, I'm definitely going to like confront him and be like you better keep that shit out of the field I don't want to see that shit over with us anymore yeah uh, listen I only give it to people on the base I don't take it myself and I don't bring it on missions so you won't see it on me I don't, I don't want to see it again period so you better wrap that shit up <laughs> yeah okay sure all right, I like it. You could, probably, you could probably find some UPP to sell it to. I'm sure they need it. So convincing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, oh, of course. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> why, why, why would I not continue? I, I don't take it. It's not mine. Yeah. I'm holding it for somebody. So I'm, I'm actually selling it. I make money off of this because if you don't know, our salaries aren't very good. <laughs> so the other... I know. <laughs> um, the other thing that happens is uh, during this time you are called into uh, an inquest with uh, Lieutenant Casados. Actually, let me let me do our recap first before we go any further. So, last we left, you guys had gotten back from your previous mission. We had a bunch of downtime events. The big thing that happened was that Lieutenant Casados, along with her synthetic Roy and Staff Sergeant uh, Zimbarski, had had an interview with the four of you that were on the previous mission. And one by one, she asked you guys what happened. And we did some secret uh, individual sessions there with each person. Uh, where she asked you guys what had happened and what had transpired during the mission. And uh, everybody gave varying accounts to, uh, to what had happened. But uh, in the end, what she ended up doing, aside to individual punishments or assignments, uh, your entire squad, the, all of you except Ogata and Broderick, he was a part of the mission, have found yourselves on extra duties, uh, you've been on barracks duty with uh, very little sleep. You've been on extra cleaning duties. Much of it monotonous, uh, monotonous and things that just probably don't need to be cleaned, but you're told to clean anyway. Um, and generally just had to do a lot more shit than you normally do. And uh, Zimbarski uh, rides most of you pretty hard, especially Sergeant Schmidt, uh, during your writing assignment that you were given. You then... A couple days later, uh, meet with Casados. You have a new mission. You are being deployed to a jungle planet called O'Bannon's World, where a, uh, I believe it was a hospital corps frigate, has gone down, sent out an SOS, asking for backup. Uh, unfortunately, the moon of O'Bannon's world uh, has extreme magnetic interference from planet to surface that makes communications through the atmosphere impossible. So 
it was explained you guys were going to go down, find the ship, which was called the uh, the UAA, UAS Glory, uh, find it, see if there's any survivors, if there are, assist them, uh, get the ship's flight recorder to find out what happened and why it crashed, and then to destroy it to make sure that there's nothing salvageable left for UPP or anyone else to get. To aid with this, you've been given three drums of QTC, which is a highly explosive uh, material. It's what Ripley uses in Alien 3 when they coat all the walls of the tunnels in an effort to kill the alien. Uh, and you have been assigned a new NPC by the name of Kent Gannon, a company agent who has been described to you as a company insurance rep whose job is to assess the damage to the glory and determine, or try to determine, uh, how th how things went down and, and how the ship crashed. Uh, this is uh, Gannon here. He's in his probably mid-twenties at oldest, uh, wearing his Weyland yutani logo proudly, and he seems completely out of his element. When you first meet him, he's got these military jungle boots that look more expensive than like parts of your kit uh and it's also explained to you that he has the transponder codes to track the glory once you guys got onto the planet so casado said uh bring him back in one piece find out what happened to the glory and then basically weaver and herschel would have to fly the dropship back into orbit in order to send a transmission you guys left the Tamba Tam in orbit, headed down to the planet on Helios 1 with uh, Weaver and Herschel, as usual, piloting. And shortly after entering the atmosphere, uh, Ganon did pick up the signal to the glory, but you guys were quickly intercepted by a UPP MiG fighter, and... It ripped a bunch of bullets into the side of the dropship. Uh, part of that damaged the cockpit and actually struck Weaver, who then passed out from her injuries. Uh, luckily, your new quote-unquote pilot, your AFV Marine Johnson, uh, managed to hop into the pilot seat while Herschel got uh, Weaver out, strapped her up and back. Ogata tried to stabilize her. And then Broderick... Uh, he did a good job, but the UPP pilot just did a way better job, and, uh... Such bullshit. <laughs> yeah, like, you had, like, a seven-zone gap, and then he was right on top of you again with, like, six successes. Like five, yeah, five it was insane. It was insane. Like, okay. Uh, you guys got hit again by some more, uh, uh, fire, and eventually your ship started to lose altitude. Luckily, Johnson kept you guys from having a disastrous crash, and it was just a, uh, a rough landing. It crashed through the canopy of the jungle uh, where you came to land. The MiG either doesn't know where you are or it's ignored where you are. You're assuming it's probably got to be able to see the plumes of smoke coming out of the jungle and can see the big furrow through the, uh, uh, the trees. But... Everybody survived the landing, um, even Gannon and Weaver. But by the time you guys got out of the shuttle, everybody's stress was at like four to six after various things had happened. Uh, you guys popped a bunch of nap relief. Luckily, Ogata brought a bunch. And you then were deciding what to do next. Uh, Gannon said he was still able to track the transponder. Looked like you guys were about two kilometers away. So you started to prepare to huff it on foot. Uh, Herschel has volunteered to carry one of the QTC drums. And Ganon, you guys have forced to carry Weaver, because it's the only thing that he seems to be able to carry. Uh, he's bitched a bit about that, but he seems to, you know, be doing what he can. And uh, you guys were about to start gathering your stuff when uh, someone opened fire on you from the trees and that is uh that is where we ended so before we go on 
I want to go back a few days to, uh, Tegar. You've got this meeting with, uh, Casados, Roy, and your staff sergeant. I'm going to, uh, deafen everybody except Matt here, uh, because they are not going to know what you've said, so... Yeah, the three of you can, can take a hike for a few minutes, if you so wish. Um, we did discuss previously, the last one I was on, what we were saying in the report, correct? Um, so, there... There doesn't seem to be much consensus to that. Um, okay. You guys had... Uh, I think you might have agreed to that, but uh, nothing, uh, you're not sure. Okay. You're not exactly sure. So what does happen is you are found by Roy, and he says, you know, uh, Casados would like to see you. Please follow me. And uh, so he brings you to this room. There's a simple table in the middle. There's a chair on either side. And uh, Casados is standing uh, by one of the chairs. Roy is in the corner. He's got his hands clasped in front of him. He's standing up. And you see st the staff sergeant, Zimbarski, is... Uh, I'm sorry, Zimborski is standing there. His arms are crossed. And he looks a little upset and pissed off. You know that the sergeant has already seen them. You're not sure if the other two have been in yet or not. Uh, so, you get in there, and Casado says, Lance Corporal, have a seat, please. There. And uh, so you take a seat, and uh, she then sits down in the chair opposite you. Uh, she's very calm, she seems very cool and collected, and she simply says... Tell me what happened on the last mission. Which portion? Start to finish? Um, give me a, uh, a manipulation test. Or observation, your choice. It's kind of like a, like a sense motive type thing. You can One. tell that uh, her eyebrow raises almost as if she's surprised that you asked that, but in a, in a good way, not a, not a suspicious way. And she says, um, "We can we can cut right to the chase, uh, Lance Corporal. Why don't you start from uh, towards the end of the mission? I think you know what I what I want to know about." Uh, well, then. Uh... You've probably heard that there was a portion where Sergeant Schmidt um, made the decision to move on while leaving PFC O'Connell behind to finish up some details. Um, I disagreed with Sergeant on how that should be handled, but followed the orders I was given. And were you aware of PFC O'Connell's intentions? I had an idea of I, I believe I knew what his intentions were and I expressed that to Sergeant Smish, Schmidt. And what did you think those intentions were? For the record. I believed he planned on killing those civilians, the test subjects. You can, you know, we all have, we all wear video feed. You're welcome to check my footage. I already have, Lance Corporal, and you seem to be one of the only people that uh, remembers any of those details like cameras and recordings and the fact that there was a synthetic that's a UA synth with you who was going to tell us the truth either way. So 
thank you for that. And uh, she looks at Zimborski, who uh, seems to have cooled down a little bit. Roy hasn't said a word. And then she turns back to you. She says, I need soldiers like you, Tagar. I need men who will follow the chain of command, but will also question when they've been given questionable orders. I understand that things have been a lot more intense and unusual than you've had in the past. I know some of these last deployments have been strange, to say the least. That could be said, yes. Much different than my last unit. That's definitely one way to put it. Anyway, I wanted to commend you for uh, trying to do what I think was the right thing. Standing up to a superior is never easier, but it's what I expect of all my soldiers when their superiors make questionable decisions. She's like, we'll be speaking with the others of your group. And as you're fully aware, we know exactly what happened. So consider this a test of character that I believe you have passed. Thank you. Thank you, Lance Corporal. That'll be all. And, yeah, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not as bad as you perhaps thought it would be. And they send you on your way. And then you are able to rejoin the group and eventually get ready to go on your next mission. So you do learn that all four of them do eventually see Casados and them at some point. Um, whether or not anyone has said anything to you, I don't know. But you would, you would know either through seeing him or hearing it uh, that O'Connell looked really shooken up after it. Uh, definitely looked distressed emotionally. So, with that in mind, we fade out of that flashback, uh, and we find ourselves in a horrible, steamy jungle, and just as you guys are getting ready to, uh, to set out, everything goes to hell. Um, now... Hagar, uh, you have an extra story point for surviving last mission. I've decided if every time you guys complete a mission, you'll get a story point. So I put one on okay. your sheet there. Um, okay, yeah, I see that. Uh, I don't think you should have health damage, though. I don't... Oh, was, was, that uh, for, was that from last mission? Probably. All right, I was going to say, because you didn't take any, any damage in the crash. Um, but... You're probably sitting at about five stress after all this went down. Um, oh, jeez. Okay. I, I know, Matt, you gave one to everybody, including Ganon. Are we just going to assume you gave one to Tagar as well? That's fine. Okay, so if you want to take that before this happens, you would have had a chance. You guys have had about 20, 30 minutes on the ground. Uh, O'Connell was doing a perimeter. Uh, Ogata was treating Weaver. She'll live. Uh, it looks like shrapnel from the, the shot that hit the cockpit struck her in the side. Uh, and it was just so much like shock to her that she passed out. She's unconscious right now, but she's alive. Um, Herschel did not take any damage in that attack. And uh, everybody else was more or less fine from the, uh, the crash. So they basically forced Ganon to carry Weaver because he, he's like so wimpy he can't fucking carry anything else. He's certainly not carrying one of the, the barrels. Uh, Herschel is strapping one onto his back right now. And there's two others. They're basically big massive like oil drum size barrels uh, filled with this, uh, this liquid. And uh, I think it was agreed that Johnson was probably not going to carry one because he's got the smart gun. So he really can't carry that and wear the smart gun harness at the same time. We're uh, in a jungle? Yes. 
yeah, the, the trees here, I think, uh, I think I said they're about 15, 16 meters high. They're tall as shit, and they mostly block out the sun. So it's very dark, except this area where your, your ship has chopped through the, uh, the trees. I'm sorry, how big did we say the barrels were? They, like, fit on a back? Yeah, I mean, if you if you want to carry them, you'd have to, like, strap it to your back, basically. So. Could I, th could I throw one on my shield, like a sled, and, like, drag it with rope? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Okay, we'll assume that's what you're doing when gunshots ring out from the trees. Uh, hitting the girt dirt nearby where you guys are. Um, so I've got you guys here in zone zero, so right in the middle. Um, you've heard multiple shots go off. There's at least, you guess, two to four people, maybe more. It's hard to tell. Uh, one of them definitely probably shoots near O'Connell because he was running the perimeter. Uh, other than that, I think that's uh, that's where we'll go. So... Uh, the dropship is going to be facing the way it is, so this is the front side. The back side with the open ramp is here. Ganon is basically, he's trying to get Weaver up on his shoulders like Fireman Carry style. Herschel strapping one of the barrels to his back. The other two barrels, we'll assume, are probably still in the, uh, the dropship. So, with that in mind, let's uh, start up a combat. Let's get some combat music. And, uh, yeah, in the words of Vasquez, let's rock. <laughs> and what would be some good combat news? Where's my combat track? There we go. Yep. Roll it out. <laughs> Damn, we suck. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, let me put Herschel on here. And we'll put Ganon, just in case. Okay, is that everybody? One, two, three, four, five. It looks like it. All right. Tagar with the initiative two. What would you like to do? Um, I guess... Is there anywhere for me to, like, take cover as the shots start rank coming out? I mean, the dropship offers the best cover, but you are in pretty thick foliage, like, within probably about 10 to 20 yards of the dropship in any direction. You can get to a tree line. Okay. Um, can I see which direction the fire is coming from? Give me an observation roll, please. This is going to be... Actually, let me roll for them, for their stealth, and I'll tell you if there's going to be a negative or not. Uh, let me roll their mobility first. All right, it's just minus one. This dude has a talent called Pack Mule. I thought that was part of his inventory. I'm like, this dude's carrying a mule? What? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. No. Would you like to push? No. Would you like to get a dark deal? <laughs> I mean, if that's open. <laughs> yes, okay. I would. You're not sure exactly where the shots are coming from. If you want to make a ranged attack, you'll have a negative uh, to hit because you're basically fi firing blind. Okay. Um, I'll probably see if I can get to the closest cover I can, like whether it's behind a tree or something. Oh, yeah. To... yeah. You can take cover. That's no problem. Take cover and then uh, take a shot. Do you want to... Well, if you take cover, you're going to stay in the same zone. Because remember, I believe it's a fast action to take cover, right? Uh, uh, actions. Looking on my sheet here. Yeah, seek cover is a fast action, so it's cover in the same zone. So you'll, just, you'll stay in the same zone, but you're in cover. Okay. Alrighty. And then I could still slow action shoot. Of course. Alright. And, uh... minus one? You don't see him at all. Um, I would say this would probably be negative three, as hard as it can get. It's formidable. More hoping okay. for luck here. 
Okay. You clip one. They do have uh, armor, though, because they are in cover as well. Uh, so, let me roll that. Nice. All right. No successes. So you do score a hit. You hear someone shout out in pain. Sounds like a person. Uh, and we'll I mean, say that's a relief. That comes from somewhere. I'll unveil the token. You don't know exactly where he is, but it's somewhere over here. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't make the sound of like a predator or an alien. So that's good. Uh, Ganon uh, is completely terrified. He has no idea what to do. Uh, he would probably just seek cover. Probably, like, trying to get under the dropship in some way. Uh, because he's, he's a coward. So he's just gonna take cover. At initiative four, the bad guys. They open fire from various spots. So the one that you shot is gonna return fire on you, Tagar. You hear some sort of automatic rifle go off. And he scores zero hits, but he's going to push it. All right, two damage. Uh, is it armor piercing? It is not. Uh, do, I need, do I get a bonus for cover? Or is that yes, negative uh, to his shot? It's, uh, it's extra armor, which is going to be... Uh, it's a little bit more than shrubbery. I'd say the equivalent of furniture. You got trees and shit, so three extra armor points. Okay. One. You take a point of damage, you take a point of stress, and the rest of them open fire. Okay. Uh, let's see. We've got lots of targets. Um... One, two, three, four, four. Okay, I'm going to roll a d6. This will include everybody except Tagar. Uh, and not Weaver, because she's down on the ground. So. First one is going to hit Schmidt. Second one is going to hit Ogata. Uh, and the third one. Well, we'll get to the third one in a second. So. Schmidt. Wait a minute. Why does this guy have stress? Don't tell me these things are fucking linked. Did I click on the wrong guy? They're not linked, but somehow all their stress went up. Weird. Huh. Hold on one second. Okay, there we go. I don't know, these tokens are all fucked up for some reason. Let's fix that. Okay, this guy's over here. Uh, oh wait, wrong guy. That's the guy that's stressed. Okay, so... Um, Alright. Alright, here we go. So, Schmidt, you are shot... Wait, that's not the right weapon. He does not have an RPG. Ignore that. <laughs> okay. Thank God. There goes the ship. Okay, so he attacks. All right, he will push. All right, two damage for you. It is not armor piercing. All right, so you take a point of damage and gain a point of stress as well. The third one on Ogata. Why has it got stress? What? In the jungle, it sucks, right? It's hot, <laughs> gunfire. It's, why, are we, why are we always in a jungle in your games, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's better than being in a sewer, let's be honest. If you're a dude in a jungle and you're approaching a crash dropship where a bunch of marines came out of it, you'd be pretty stressed out, too. You know <laughs> right? what I'm saying? All right, here we go. All right, I'll push. All right, two damage to you, Ogata. 
Oh, there was the quick ready rolling armor, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, you click the armor click button. This. There we go. That'll do it. All right, same for you. Point of damage, point of stress. The last one does have an RPG. Oh, God. And he <laughs> is shooting for your dropship. Oh. Luckily, it comes from the front, not the back. So he doesn't have a clear line of sight to the QTC drums. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Four dice well, that's, that's not and great. three successes. So, the, Is anybody a mechanic? Uh, the rocket. So the rocket comes from over here, okay? You don't see the guy, but you do see the rocket come spiraling out of the trees. It smashes through the broken cockpit window... It hits something, and that chain detonates into the two drums of QTC that are still inside. And there is a massive explosion and fireball that engulfs the dropship. Uh, we didn't, we didn't, those, those canisters or drums out of the ship? You guys hadn't strapped them up yet. Yeah, I think the only one was Herschel had his on his back. I think that was it, right? Because you guys were still Please deciding like, who was going to... You guys were still going to... Well, you guys were still deciding what to do with them. Uh, and unfortunately, they got the drop on you. Just make better initiative next time, bro. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, Sean, I'll tell you what. You're holding it, they hit it, and it goes off all the time I, your back. I, Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Yeah. Uh, take me out now, Sarge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not going home now anyway, this, so... This, this, this right. isn't Merkborer, okay? Wrong game. I have to make right. another backup character? Yeah, you're not... This isn't... This drops out of the sky. Is an Imperial Guard levels of life expectancy, okay? You get a little it's bit longer. It's not only then. war. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, with three successes, that's five, six, seven, that's eight damage, or seven damage, uh, plus the drums. Um, so, Ganon was hiding under the dropship? He's trying to. like He's like hiding under the wing. You're all near the dropships. So you're all going to okay. get knocked. Okay. Except for Tegar, because he, he's had a chance to move. So, I need everybody that is not Tegar to give me a mobility test. This will be at negative two. Because oh, so you're all pretty dude. close to it. It's a big explosion. <laughs> okay. she said. All right. Why did that... Oh, they just no. throw all of our stuff out. Okay. Ooh. Okay, O'Connell. Is my roll in there? It is. It's the very first one. You have three successes. Uh, Ogata okay. has one with his one dice, but he panics, but he keeps it together. Schmidt has none. Broderick has zero. Ganon has two. Oh, let me roll for Herschel. Okay. We will assume three uh, Ganon not only scurries out in time, but he actually throws himself on top of Weaver to shield her from the blast. So he'll use his he'll use his extra success to protect her. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna shove uh, Johnson like so he as I'm dodging so that he dodges and then I'm gonna dive to cover to cover sergeant get down Sarge. all right somehow even though they're on opposite sides of the ship he pulls that off Just moves. <laughs> <laughs> time slows uh, and o'connell yep flashes more he's he sees his sergeant's life flash before his eyes so no. <laughs> my brown nose <laughs> so everyone is safe uh yeah, you're knocked. You're all knocked prone, uh, but no damage from from that. Uh, at least I don't think it is. Let me double check here. Yeah, you guys are good. Uh, but I think everybody's stress is going to go up when the shuttle goes up in a massive fireball, and the fact that you know this guy has an RPG. Uh, Herschel is next. Does anybody have any orders for him that you might be shouting at this point? 
locate the fucking <laughs> the enemies. Well, he can't. He, he can't hurt. Protect you. the explosive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't stand next to us. <laughs> spread, spread out. Spread out. Okay, now he's getting too many orders. Oh, he doesn't know right. which one to follow. Get down. <laughs> I All think uh, Protect the Explosive, that's our last one, is probably pretty good. All right, he will uh, he'll do his best to find some cover and try to get it out of the line of fire. Schmidt, you're up. So he's, he's still in the zone. I'm going to do an observation to see if I can see more accurately where these guys are at. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Nine dice, zero successes. Boys. Would you like to push? Mm. Yeah, why not? Nice. There we go. Hey. All right. We'll say you see three of them. The guy with the rocket launcher, uh, the guy that has already been shot, and then this guy down here. Uh, we'll assume this guy's still in cover. You guys haven't really seen where he's at. I will take aim at the guy with the rocket launcher. Makes sense. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And it's at a uh, negative with cover, right, for him? No, he gets extra armor. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not sure what happens. Why don't you have any dice for your attack? I don't know. I clicked my pulse rifle. Try it again. Uh, do I get rid of a stress for it? Or I kept it together, so. Yeah, that's weird. There it is. That's Sweet. Weird. Okay. So <laughs> say, like, you, all of a sudden you have no skill points whatsoever in your primary attack. Literally, uh, literally have to have those skill points. It's mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you want to use your extra success for? Your stunt. Hmm. I think you know. How about they uh, they drop their weapon? How about that? Ooh, like it. Okay. Through his armor. He does block one of the hits. Uh, so he's going to take a total of two damage. Or I'm sorry, one damage and a point of stress. Nice. Okay. This guy should actually be at two stress because he got shot too. Okay. Johnson. Uh, yeah, Sch um, Schmidt, yeah. do you want to do anything else? You That was your, your slow action to shoot. You still uh, let's action. go take cover. Okay. All right. Johnson. Uh, I think I'm going to full auto with me smart gun. I like it. I like the way you think. Like the, the scene in Predator. <laughs> Just the shred, the, shred the jungle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great scene. <laughs> I'm still partial to the uh, no shaving cream razor. <laughs> okay, let's see if it does this right. Because I have six base, talent is plus two is eight, and then the gun incinerator gives me, or the smart gun can be plus three. So it should be 11 dice. That was not 11 dice. Mm -hmm. Was it? Three, six, eight. It didn't include the bonus from the smart gun. Oh, I used the incinerator, that's why. Let's roll through my dice. Nice. nice. One more. Um, Four successes. Four successes. So I'll hit the um, guy down here. And the guy down here. I think they have to be within a zone of each other to do the full oh. auto. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So then I'll just hit the two people over here. Two. Okay. Um, uh, now one of them dropped their weapon, so I'll hit the two over here instead. Okay. <clears throat> How um, much damage we got? So... I believe the... Smart gun's base three, right? Base three, yeah. And Damn, so that's brutally. First two hits, uh, so it should be base four, or four damage, I think, to each one if I use uh, one success for each of them. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm um, not sure what Eric's doing. Oops, sorry. Just trigger finger <laughs> over here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the one guy that's already injured, uh, he's, he's fucked. There's no way. He's just dead. Nice. The other guy 
has a little bit of armor from uh, stuff. He blocks one point of damage. He takes three. Uh, he is still standing. Damn. Just barely. O'Connell. Oh, do you want to use your fast action? Yeah, I'll, I'll grab cover. Okay. I'll move further away in case of explosions. Oh, you can either move or take cover. Because remember, you take cover oh, okay. in the zone you're in. Gotcha. Then I'll take cover in the zone I'm in. Okay. Okama. I will... Um, so these guys are long range right now? That's oh, right now. yeah. Yeah, you guys are supposed to be taking range modifiers. My bad. Damn. Thanks, man. I should have just not... <laughs> Anything. Uh, yeah, long, they, long range is minus two. Yeah, that's why they're rolling four dice. Mm. I think I get a free and no negative roll. Um, but From what? I don't know. Uh, yeah, so just I'm making what? shit up just because? <laughs> what? I'll pop and say with Amy. Uh, and uh, okay. uh, how about this guy down here? Take a shot at him. Go for it. Nice damage. All right. Or do is the RPG come from that guy? No, it's no. the guy in the, the top corner. All right, that is enough. You you see multiple shots hit someone in the trees. You see splurts of blood, and you hear a body crash to the ground. Oh, gotta end the round for us. Um, I will basically take a shot at the guy in the bottom left. Um, has he been injured yet? Yeah, everybody's been injured. I'll you got go hit by smart shoot code. him. Two of them have been really injured. <laughs> nice. You panic. Not great. You burn through a clip, and you don't hit anything. Uh, I have to roll for panic? No, it did automatically. It did yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but you have to reload next round because your clip is empty. Tagar, top of the round. Seems like your squad is winning this fight. Okay. Um, I guess I'm gonna keep sh uh keep shooting in this direction. Uh, do I need to make an observation test, or did I see him after I hit him? No, you saw that guy go down. These two are still standing. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I'll shoot this one closer to me. Okay, you panic, but you got four successes. Guy is toast. He's not coming back after that. All right. Um, Ganon is next, and then it's the uh, uh, the bad guys. Uh, so we'll assume Ganon is trying to find better cover. And at this point, the last guy, he peels off into the trees and is obviously going to break out of this fight bring it to an end. So, just as fast as it begins, it seems to end. And all is quiet, except for the noise of the jungle. I mean, they got gorilla units out here. Now, what the fuck was that? Thanks for the save, O'Connell. It was a close one. Yeah, anytime, anytime. Well, I mean, there goes our ride home. Oh, we weren't going to get that back up and running today anyway, right? It's, uh, they fucked our engines or something. Well, hey, with your luck, hey, Tegar, you might find some more RPG ammo on that other guy. We gotta, I'm going to go find, uh, find a new ship, I guess. Did your job ship just completely toast at this point? Oh, it's gone. Oh, it's there. Yeah. Sounds like it, yeah. Yeah, there's no fixing that, man. Herschel, huh? Herschel, how's your barrel holding up? Still in one piece. Well, at least that uh, means we don't have to carry multiple. <laughs> Yay. Uh, um, do we know which direction we're headed? Uh, yes, Ganon is able to track the uh, transponder from the ship with his p dad. Alright, Ganon, you want to lead the way? Wait, which rank, what rank is Ganon? Not particularly... I'm gonna. Uh, he's a city, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna 
I'm gonna check out these bodies. We didn't really get a good look at. Them. Yeah, yeah, he's he's not military. He's uh, he's a he's corporate, he's oh, a okay. corporate agent. Oh, okay. He's way you. I'm gonna well, caress my crystal a little bit. Seven thousand dollar boots. Uh, five thousand actually. PFC. Oh, oh. Good to know. I was only two thousand off from my guess. <laughs> he's like trying to clean himself off from all the fucking dirt and mud and shit. Um, it's only gonna get worse. Just embrace it. Uh, how do you deal with this? All right. Food and paycheck. O'Connell, you go check the bodies. What you find are indeed what appear to be some sort of guerrilla fighter. Uh, they have camouflage to help blend into the jungle. You know, leaves and twigs kind of put into some of their kit. Otherwise, they're not really heavily armed or armored. Uh, they have uh, some sort of an assault rifle, which uh, is a F90 automatic assault rifle. It's from a, a Three World Empire weapon. And it looks kind of like the... Um... Oh, what the fuck was the weapon in Counter-Strike, Matt? The, uh, was it the... Not the sauce. The, um... Oh, the auto sniper? No, no, the weird looking assault rifle. Um, the FAMAS? Was it the FAMAS? It was really good, the AUG. Oh, uh, the AUG. Ah, uh, it the looks scope. It looks like the AUG, yes, with like the mini scope on it. I'm trying to see can, if I can show you guys a, uh, a picture. Um, go. They got spare ammo Ooh. on their bodies. Yeah, I'm kind of going to start dragging I them mean, into a pile. For for their weapons, they do. <laughs> Alright, here we go. This is what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Definitely a an AUG. It's the front half of an AUG, or the back half of an AUG, and the front half of whatever the fuck M4. that is. <laughs> hey, har. Uh, uh, like garbage. Yeah, so there's it's a, it's an automatic assault rifle. Um, it's basically the same as an AK forty forty seven stats wise. Uh, it's long range, damage two, no armor piercing, but it can go full auto. Uh, all four of these guys, well, the three of them that you find, they appear to be Asian. Uh, perhaps either Chinese or maybe Korean. You're, you're not exactly sure. They definitely look like they're Asian. Um, and they really, they're not really wearing much armor. You know, they've got like little bits and pieces, but it looks mostly like, like kind of like civilian guerrilla fighters. The last guy, he has a Norcom RPG, uh, which you guys all would know Norcom is the company that makes the UPP weapons. Uh, Stats-wise, it's very similar to the UA RPG, except it doesn't have a bonus to hit. Otherwise, it works pretty much the same way. And he does have two spare rockets that he did not fire. Oh, nice. But they will not work on Eric's things, different ammunition. So we just have to grab it's his double <laughs> RPG it. Double fisting uh, RPGs, <laughs> GTA. You also see that they have a variety of uh, some basic like climbing equipment. Uh, one or two of them have a flashlight, probably like on their guns. And um, the guy with a rocket launcher has like a like a multi tool, like a Swiss Army knife type thing. Do they um, have any kind of PDAT on them? No. Yeah, they have like a multi-tool or something. I'd take that. Yeah, you can take it. Any like communication devices, like earpieces? Or nothing. Anything? Nothing. Yeah. Right. And they've all got like a little bit of like actual camo, like painted on like their exposed skin, like on the face or the arms or maybe like the chest, like under their vest. But uh, yeah. I, I want to look one over for any distinguishing marks, like a tattoo or any sort of like symbol on them, or, like a patch or anything that might identify a group or organization. Uh, give me an observation roll. Straight up? Straight up. Straight up, dog. I panic looking at the side of the body, which is my job. <laughs> Maybe you panic because you don't find any insignia 
you know, you're expecting, oh, these are probably UPP or something else, but it unsettles you when you realize they don't seem to have any sort of insignia or designating marks or anything like that. Well, we all get stress. Nice! Ugh. Yeah! Yeah! I just got rid of one, damn it! <laughs> it starts again. Uh, it's saying I can't Undefined ID does not exist in embedded collection. I can't increase my stress. Sean, what? There. What is wrong with your no, no. I did it from your token. Did that help? Yeah, oh. I, I went to the token too, so it's, it's at three now. But what I do to my token doesn't do it to my main character sheet. Because it's messing. Because they're not linked. I try okay. to avoid linking stuff because it usually causes problems. Okay. So, I I just had to redo all my skills and talents from last time because they weren't on my sheet. Ooh. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I think for your guys it's okay because you're only ever one token. The the thing with linking is if you have multiple tokens on the map, if you give one of them stress, for example, they all get stress. So when I use it for enemies, it's a big pain in the ass. But oh. I will. Oh, some of you were linked and some of you were not linked. That's the problem. All right, I'm going to link all your guys right now so that we don't have this problem anymore. And then I'll just give you new tokens. Okay, uh, I think that should be everyone now. Yeah, okay, sorry about that. I'll give you guys new tokens here. Yeah, I'll, uh, once I'm done gathering the bodies up uh, together, I'm gonna I'll use my rabbit's foot. Okay. So last session I lost my. Um, oh, drop. that's right! It fell out the fucking dropship during the air battle. Yep. Oh man. So, can I? Can I? Yeah, I don't know. This Rattle piece of the wreckage. Friend. You're you're yeah, gonna like, you're gonna uh, be out of a signature item for this mission, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, but I will grab a piece of the wreckage. Bless you. Because it's my second survived crash. I feel like that's pretty lucky. <laughs> okay, okay. Just grab, like, uh, one of the levers, small enough that's... Yeah. Just throw it in the bag. You should get one of the speakers for, for Weaver. Oh. oh, yeah. I'll grab one of the speakers. <laughs> it's a damn shame. Yeah, you see Herschel's kind of staring at the crash, like, forelongingly, like... Hmm. It was my first love. She is not going to be happy. She's probably going to be happy that she's not dead, right? I don't know if she loved those speakers more than herself, I feel like. He uh, he looks at you very plainly, and he goes, she'll be more angry that the ship is gone. Damn. Okay. She's a real one. I've, uh... Yeah, she's, uh, she's a firecracker for sure. I've flown with, uh, with Weaver for some time. I've gotten to know her quite well. All right, everybody, step back from the bodies. I'm going to show you a little something I learned in the Outer Rim. Is that a good idea? Should we just now start trucking forward, or...? Yeah, we're, we're going to leave right after this. <laughs> oh, okay. And um, O'Connell puts them in a body and then proceeds to booby-trap them with a claymore and cover it up with foliage and plants and... And more bodies? <laughs> and more bodies, yeah. Wow, okay. You're putting a bomb on the bodies? That's what kind happens like a war crime guys. or something. <laughs> we have flame a little bit. I don't know if there are war crimes. <laughs> war crimes, you say. <laughs> What's, what happens in the jungle stays in the jungle. <laughs> well, and it's all recorded in video. Yeah, oh, it's right <laughs> off your camera, right? <laughs> okay, officer. I'm going to need your body cam <laughs> on. Thank you. <laughs> Would I know if this is uh, going to be an issue? Since I just got in trouble, I'd probably want to stay out of trouble for a little while. You don't think, given the circumstances, that this would be an actionable offense. You are now stranded. You have no way of communicating. You're in hostile territory. You've been attacked. You have no idea who or what these people are or why they attacked you. So, you don't you don't see anything that would be better. Plus, like, they, these guys are dead already, right? Like, you know, 
It's not like you're tying a landmine to a live guy and leaving him to be found and rescued. <laughs> that would be questionable. Hawk tied. Yeah, and right? Gagged. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just put a like a little recording device like help me. <laughs> yeah, just just re Keep help me over and over. Yeah, references yeah, yeah. going, man. Yeah, <laughs> Predators. That was a fun movie. All I right. Could, yeah. Thought. Okay. Well, you booby trap the body, and that's one less landmine you have to carry around. Yes, sir. Oh, we can take like a rest action to recover stress. Yeah, that, that's a thing we can do. We have in, to be safe. in a safe place. I'll tell you this. This is not that. I'll tell you that much right now. But if we get away from the wreckage... If you guys find, like, a place to hide, maybe. But this this spot, definitely not. Yeah, let's let's get to the ship. Crash ship. And scope it out. Maybe we can rest there for a little bit uh, inside it. Yeah. We got a few kilometers to we get there, right? That's what uh, Gen was saying. Two, two kilometers. kilometers. Yes, yeah, looks so. to be about two kilometers, give or take. And, yeah, this way, Tagar can... Uh, Pit Weaver in his shield and dragger instead of having the scrawny guy carry him. Yeah, we could make a litter. Okay. Whoever these people are, they know where our ship is and they know where we crashed. And so if these four showed up now, there's probably more on the way. So the longer we linger here, the more likely we get ambushed again. Yeah. And one of them got away, so. Alright. Uh, someone's picking up that those two RPGs in the, the launcher, right? Uh, no one's claimed dibs. Uh, I mean, oh, and I it doesn't. It. It's, and it doesn't work in mine. No, so, it's diff different ammo. Yeah. So one of you's welcome to grab it. Apparently, I'm helping with Weaver now. All right. So you're gonna use your oh, shield man. basically as a as a sled gurney. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it is. A trek through the jungle. It's about as fun as you would expect. It's hot. It's humid. After being in a firefight and a plane crash, you are completely drenched in sweat head to toe. Uh, your gear is sticking to you. And uh, there's bugs and mosquitoes. And it just sucks. I will need everyone to please give me a stamina test. Yeah, I'm adding the RPG to the Norcom one, Chris. Yes. This RPG's heavy as fuck. No, screw that. Oh, Ganon has zero successes, as one would expect. <laughs> I can give him one of mine. All right, how do you how do you encourage him to keep going? You can tell he like he's probably towards the front because he's got the PDAT, so he's maybe like second or third in line. But you can see he's like, you could tell he looks exhausted already. Um, it's kind of uh, like, look, we've already we've already faced, you know, the worst of it. Let's hope so. Keep keep moving forward. It's one foot in front of the other. <sighs> All you got. I just, uh, I didn't expect this. You know, they told me to come and check this ship, not. Trek through a damn jungle, get shot at. Yeah. Plans only survive first contact. All right, uh, let's see what else. Johnson, you drop an item. Uh, your stress increases by one. Sweet. Uh, we will say what else? What do you got in your your inventory here? I've got an incinerator. Um, the smart gun's strapped to me in the harness, so I assume I can't drop that. I've got electrical tools, a folding winch, and the RPG I picked up. And a, and a med kit. All right. Uh, we will roll a d4 for all those small items. Uh, I don't think you're going to lose the incinerator. That's too big. But the other one you might, like, drop, and it gets lost, like, somewhere in the jungle. So, on this trek. Uh, was the last one you said a med kit? Yeah. Med kit, uh, maybe you slip down a small little hill, or uh, it gets snagged on some bushes and trees, and then you snap it out, and then you realize it's gone, you just, you can't find where it went. Rip. Big rip. Yep. Uh, how'd everybody else do? Panic. Oh, 
Panic, panic, panic. I, I gave everybody more stress again. <laughs> no. <laughs> awesome. Oh, raise those numbers, boys. Okay. I have more pills. <laughs> it's automatic, isn't it? Stress oh. add on? Uh, didn't do it for me. Yeah. Okay. But for yourself, it usually is. I added for me. Okay. 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save my other one. All right. So, uh, it's taking a long time. You're moving at a very slow pace. And this is not going to be an, an easy trek. Uh, it's maybe an hour or two you're into this. And uh, you guys come across. Uh, there's a small clearing. You realize it's not a clearing, but the trees make way because you can see there is a river in front of you. It's not a huge river. You could probably cross it. But you do see this river uh, winding past you guys. And you see two individuals by the river. Uh, they look similar to the people that just attacked you, but they are not armed. They are dressed in basic civilian clothing. You know, think very much like civilian, like from the Vietnam era, right? Just villager. And uh, one of them's got like a old red bandana wrapped around the top of their head. Uh, there's a man and a woman, and you see that they are carrying two they each have two rickety-ass buckets, one in each hand, and it looks like they were either gathering water or gathering something out of the river. Uh, looks like they're they're reaching in and trying to grab something, and you see them throwing stuff into these buckets. Uh, if you guys want to remain hidden, I'll need mobility rolls. Wallows? Damn! Schmidt! Holy cow. Okay, we got a lot going on here. I'll give one to Tagar and Johnson. All right. Thanks, bud. No problem. Yeah. I'm looking like yeah. all this heavy shit. Help me out, dog. I mean, I, yeah, I'm pulling Weaver. Okay, Ogata. Looks like you're going to lose I something here. Panic again. Let's see, what do we have? Your med kit, machete, handcuffs, surgical kit. Uh, where do you have the pills stored? Are they in the med kit or are they like in a separate container, would you say? It'd be like, like, a, like a vest pocket kind of a thing. Okay, so that's one, two, three. Do you, do, are you actually carrying two med kits like it is on your inventory? Yes. Okay, so that's four. six here. Alright. Uh, one of the med kits uh, you drop. Um, might lose track of it because you guys are trying to kind of rush this. So in your rush, you dive to the ground or someone throws you to the ground to try to uh, get out of line of sight of these people. And But I think there's enough extra successes to go around to cover everybody. So you guys all take cover in the foliage, you're at the tree line, and uh, I assume you watch to see what they do? Yep. Okay. So, several minutes go by. It's very clear to you all that they are probably fishing something out of the river. Uh, maybe about 10-15 minutes go by, and eventually it seems like they've kind of finished up, and they start to move on. You can't tell if their buckets are full, or if they're moving to somewhere else, maybe they're not getting enough of what they're trying to get here. But they do eventually start moving down the river uh, to your left. So they're like kind of moving away from you guys. They did not notice you. Yeah, and how far are we? Ugh. Another, another kilometer and a half, Sergeant. How's the hauling going there, Oh, we'll, we'll push through. Alright. Alright. Okay. Uh, 
Everybody give me another stamina test. I'm gonna use my saved one. Oh, that's a good, good idea. I guess I could roll for Herschel, because he could try to help you guys if he gets any extras. Oh, look at that. He comes through with three. Okay. So this time... John... Oh my goodness. Johnson stresses out. Everybody's stress goes up by one. Schmidt, you have a nervous twitch uh, as you're getting nervous with all the weird things you're hearing in the uh, in the woods. No, Schmidt trembles. I had the nervous twitch. That's isn't that what I said? That's what I meant. Okay. Unfortunately, Ogata screams. Okay. <laughs> so here's what happens. Um, you guys are walking. It's miserable. And Hold on. Should he have re removed his panic when he finished yes. the drop item? Yes, he should have. Okay. Uh, so what did he roll? He rolled a stress plus... He rolled a five. What was your current stress before that roll, Matt? Four. That would be a ten. Oh. Which is scream. Wait. Five plus four is nine. Oh, my bad. I can't count. Wait, wait, I wasn't... I guess I don't understand how panic works in this game. So some panic effects stay in effect. The one that's a nine drop item, that just ends instantly as soon as you do it. Like, you don't just... You don't, you're not stuck in panic. So what the game does is if you're currently suffering from panic and you roll another panic test... Even if you roll equal to or lower than the panic you're currently suffering from, it bumps it up to the next step. So, because it thought you were at 9, it automatically bumped you up to 10, which is Scream. But I have plus 1 from Talent slash Crit. I'm Looking not, at the yeah, I'm not sure. No idea what that means. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why it says that, but... You it would... like it, it, uh, the game is automatically removing my panic condition for me. Hmm. I, I don't know. Well, you would have had another nine, which is drop item again. Uh, <laughs> so, your stress does go up by another one. And here's what happens. So, you guys are, are moving through this jungle. And Ogata, you trip on something. Maybe it's some foliage. Maybe it's a, uh, a tree root. You go face first into the dirt. Uh, like, a big splash of mud. And when you, like, come to, you see that there is a skull. A human skull in the undergrowth. And a snake comes out of the eye and, like, hisses at you just inches from your face. So you, you instantly, like, back off, uh, and in the process, you know, you lose track of something as you try to get away from this thing. It hisses, maybe takes a snap at you, but then starts to slither back into the undergrowth. So I'll roll another dice here. Uh, that is going to be your handcuffs are gone. How do I delete this item? Right click on the little pencil icon on the right. We'll give Got you an it. option. Okay. This point, you guys feel like you've been marching forever. It's been several hours. Uh, and it looks like you guys are about halfway at this point. Actually, no, you guys had enough successes, so you got maybe about half a kilometer left to go. Do you push on or take a break? We can we reduce place. stress? Can we reduce stress? Like, is there a safe place? Or, I'll, like, set up our perimeter? I'll need an observation roll to try to find something good that you guys could use as, uh, as, like, cover or to, like, set up a camp. I'm trained in observation, so I will tell. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bro. We can have Herschel look since he doesn't have stress. 
I will assess Herschel. Please. <laughs> All right. Well, he rolled zero successes, but we'll roll the extra. Maybe. Maybe. No. Zero successes. <gasps> I'm else? good observation, but I'm scared to roll only dice in this game, so I don't know if I really want to do it or not. <laughs> okay. Let's see. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Okay. I didn't find anything, guys. Oh, uh, God. All right, Ganon will search. Well, maybe hey, not. Hey, there we go. That's how we do it. O'Connell. O'Connell, thank God for you. All right, O'Connell, what do you what do you find that's a good place for you guys to, to hide out for a while and hang? We're on the bank of this creek that they're kind of doing whatever they're doing, and then there's a big log, and it's, like, all muddy. And we could cover ourselves with that mud if we feel inclined, if we feel like it might camouflage us, but it's a good nook. Okay. I dig it. And uh, God is gonna, I mean, oh God, she's, O'Connell is gonna use uh, a banter here as well. Okay, how long do you guys want to rest for? Every turn reduces a point of stress, his turn is about 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, I, I also have a talent that reduces stress for people uh, around oh, me as well. What do you have? Um, I have the Calming Presence talent. Um, I can basically pick one other member of this, one other character during a stress, uh, during a rest, to reduce an additional stress per turn. Nice. Okay. I only have two, so Banter should take care of it if we're here long enough. Yeah, so I have three. Does, does have Banter five. reduce it by one? I think right. One additional every uh, turn. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, for every turn. Okay. Is it for yeah. everybody or just the two bantering? Every, it's for everybody. Yeah. Right. So I'm basically, definitely. as long as you guys rest, if there's at least one person with banter, you'll reduce two stress per turn instead of one. Okay. And it doesn't stack if you have multiple people with banter. So. Um and. I can reduce the stress of one other person by one additional one with my calming presence. Um, okay. So whoever's got more stress. Probably the sergeant. <laughs> take it. Take, take an extra stress. For yourself. <laughs> well, it, looks like if you, it looks like if you guys do two turns, it's like a half hour. Uh, yeah, we'll everyone, will, everyone will be down to almost zero. Ganon yeah. will be at zero. I'll be at zero. I'll okay. be at two. I'll be at one. That's okay. I, I can use my uh, signature item to drop into the strats, yeah? Yes. Uh, do we also get health back for that? You can use your talent then on Sean, because he still has stress, right? Yeah, I have two stress. On the second turn? Oh, then, then I use my calming presence on you. You reduce one additional stress. Oh, nice. Right. And your panic goes away there, Adam. If anybody has panic results, they should go away. So just click them off your sheet. Very good. Yes, uh, health heals at one health per turn, so you guys will heal two health. If anybody's injured, imagine get to use yeah, for like signature item. Yeah, so for like okay. thirty minutes, I'm I'm telling dad jokes, I'm trying to get Tagar to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we go on break, what's your dad joke? Oh, you want to hear one? Okay. Uh, okay, so you better have one in the chamber. You don't you don't bring right, that up I mean, and not expect brought one. Brought it up. <laughs> All right. So there's uh, there's two guys, right? Uh, they they want to go in this bar. All right, and the bar has a sign on it that says "No dogs allowed." Okay. He's so excited. Both of them to have tell dogs. All right, and one of the and they're both buds. So they he says, "Watch this. I'll get us in here." He walks up to the guy, the bouncer, in the front of the bar. And he says, "And the bar, and the bar the bouncer stops him right there." And he's like, "No dogs allowed." And the guy says, "Oh, I'm blind. This is this is my service dog. You know, I, I gotta go. He goes everywhere I go. I can't see." He says, "All right, come on in." All right, and the other guy comes up behind him and tries to do the same thing. Oh, I'm blind. You know, it's my service dog. Can't go anywhere without him. And the, and the bouncer, he says, sir, that's a chihuahua. And the guy looks at him shocked. And he says, they gave me a chihuahua? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you might you might have got to take our laugh. At least a chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a good one. All right, we're going to take our break, listeners, viewers. I've got a very special surprise to bring back when, uh, when we return. So get your Dr. Pepper, and uh, we'll see if you guys can make it to the ship in one piece. Yeah. Peace. Mm. BRB, BRB.
So, there it is. Ah, you got oh, him. There it is. You. Dr. Pepper. How many Dr. stores did you go to for those? I only had to go to the one. Um, oh, I just okay. I just went to Walmart today, but they only had two boxes left, and one was all, like, smashed up. So, Ooh. we are going to... Oh, my God, they smell so fucking good. We're Have gonna... you had one yet? It's the first one. Oh, I was waiting. I was waiting to, uh, to share. Is this okay. is this part edible? Share the experience on air. Dragon's Greed Gaming Unbox. Oh my god, it's edible. The Dr. Pepper logo's edible. Oh my god, it's so good. I gotta warm the donut up first, makes it even better. No, no, I don't have time for that. Yeah, Literally 10 seconds watching. in the mic. <laughs> Literally 10 seconds. 10 seconds. <laughs> and they're, that's twice as good. <laughs> I mean, there's six donuts left, so maybe. Too. The next one. Not that I'm gonna eat, eat six donuts right now, I'd probably be dead by the end of this thing, but. <laughs> Sounds like a challenge to me. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a fast track to diabetes. Sounds like not a true Dr. Pepper fan. That's why we've only got the small mini Dr. Pepper today, not a full can. Oh, okay. Smart. Like with your new uh, thought ahead. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I can't talk shit to you. I cheated today. I had a had a big old thing of biscuits and gravy and eggs just slathered in it. It was fucking delicious. Good. It's good, but um, I don't. I can't tell if I taste Dr. Pepper. It's mostly well, just sugar. Deal breaker. <laughs> that, that, that's the sugar. I mean, maybe, in there. maybe you ate the wrong one. What's the other one taste like? <laughs> we'll get to that. Maybe we'll get to that. all six. Well, there no. There's right out of meat. It's there's three. There's three. There's three different ones. This oh, okay. one is the, the little football. Is clearly filled with uh. Like custard of some sort. Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Only this one says Dr. Pepper on it. It so. should be. Oh my god, that would Just be so liquid good. Liquid shoots out of your <laughs> mouth. Ew. Or like, no, dude, it's Dr. Pepper that's still in like corn syrup form. You know, so it's just like slu oh, all that. Oh my god, that sounds so good. We'll get back no, to you. It really doesn't. We'll get back to you, Krispy oh Kreme. All right. Sounds you disgusting. were just wired wrong. Mm. <laughs> You ever tried the Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce? No. You barbecue probably have. Sweet enough. You used to. Didn't you used to do like a yeah, annual the... Dr. Pepper barbecue? I did. Yeah. Damn. We got to nine I got, years I... before I before we had to stop because of, you know, getting married Bye. to my future ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it with a straight face. <laughs> You have to support your Dr. Pepper dreams. <laughs> Listen, Dr. Pepper. Pour one out for my homies. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's great. Oh, boy, we're leaving that one in. Oh, that's too funny. All right. You got to laugh at your misfortunes, folks. Otherwise, there's no point. So, anywho, uh, we're back. I need everybody... Please give me an observation test while you guys are resting. I suppose. Oh my god. Sweet. Why do you still have stress? <laughs> because I had six. Oh my god. <laughs> One stress. But wow, we are, we are just, just... Sleeping on the job. <laughs> okay. So, Broderick... I'm keeping it together. We are, we are, we are resting hard. <laughs> yeah, everyone's just passed out. So, Johnson, you're uh, all sitting there, listening to these jokes, and uh, you look over at uh, Weaver, who's, you know, strapped down on Tagar's shield. You notice there's a couple vines that you didn't see there before. And as you sit there, the reason you panic is because you see that these vines are slowly creeping towards her. Almost like snakes. They're like slithering out of the mud, over the edge of the shield, and making their way towards her body. Uh, I will, you know, grab the shield and try to pull it away from him. Yeah, you all see him, like, yank the shield. Like, kind of yanks you with it, Tagar. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, everyone's kind of, like, startled. Did I see that? These fucking vines. They're creeping up on her. They're like alive, sentient vines. We okay. were, you do, you we do, were. you do see them retreating back into the mud. It looks like. 
we were warned that the the flora as well as the fauna was was pretty uh, dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, this, this is fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good sign to keep moving. Yeah. Now, get out of here. now we have is the forest trying to take us out. Hell yeah, bro. Okay. Uh, Maybe we uh, just start a random forest fire. <laughs> I'm going to take up yes. my machete and be very aggressive with chopping things down as we go through the forest area. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, did someone bring a machete? Uh -huh. uh... <laughs> I mean, I'm loaded up with knives by this point, so... Yeah. Oh, did, didn't you take the, I have an incinerator. the colonel's knife, right? Or the guy from the base? Yep. yep. Nice. Okay. Eventually, <clears throat> you guys get to... Uh, get to moving again, starting to make some progress, and you eventually come upon a large, uh, basically like looks like muddy hill that's uh, that's in your path. And I'm going to need everybody. I think there's a test here to uh, try to climb this. Okay, so yeah, um, basically where you guys come to. The jungle is very thick around you, and you find yourselves on this, like, incline. And it looks like it's this massive, massive hill. But it's pretty steep, and it's pretty much just mud. There's very little growth or, or like, vegetation here. And uh, Ganon looks down at his P-Dat, and then uh, he looks over at you, Tagar, and he says, um, it looks like it's probably just over this. Anybody want to recon a scout ahead? No. Uh, I'll yeah. try to cautiously approach the, uh, the lip of the, the hill. All right. I'll need a mobility test at minus wait. two. Aren't you a medic? Oh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you doing oh, that? Us. No, oh, no, no. Kana would stop you. <laughs> Too late. I said I was going to do it, so I did it. Let the kid live his dreams, come on. If you want to stop him, I'll need an opposed test, Scar. I'm not gonna go. You got a success, so... What? Like, three yeah, don't, mobility? Don't you, you want to take that away from him? <laughs> He's finally gonna get to see some action. I could command him not to oh, go. Oh, we'll see some action, alright. I'll see more action. Oh, oh, alright, so, so, Ogata, you... You basically, you're, you have to get down on all fours to climb up this, and you are constantly slipping and sliding and losing your grip, but you don't ever fall all the way back. Eventually, you do get to the top of the hill, and you realize, like, this hill is probably, like, a good 10 meters tall at the very top. So you're, like, you're like looking down. It takes you a good, like, maybe three, four minutes to climb up this, this hill. And, oh, um, I should have done this. So you've got a nice view now. Um, there's still tons of trees around you, but you can see on the other side, you can see the wreck of the ship is down on the other side, and it looks like part of this hill is because it's where the ship has crashed into the ground and basically forced up the ground. Uh, you, you see bits and pieces of the ship all over the place. Uh, there's like a lot of, uh, like basically a big pool of water, almost like it landed like in a... Uh, like a pond, sort of. Uh, but you've definitely found the ship. But you'll need to get everybody else up here so you guys can get down on the other side. Uh, can I just look around for like an easier way to get up? Like, like, it's like a lower part of this hill? The the trees are so thick here, it looks like you guys would have to probably double back. Plus, even though the hill is high, the trees are way higher, so you can't see how far they'd have to go around to, to get past it. Anybody got a rope? Toss me a rope. You like? Toss your rope. Toss it up. All right. I won't make you roll. We'll assume you eventually get the rope up there. Uh, but everyone is going to need to make the test here. It will not be negative two because you have the rope. It's still going to be tricky though. Uh, but it won't be that bad. Uh, I gotta roll 
for Ganon? <laughs> Oops. He has zero successes. And Herschel. Damn. Alright. We'll say, uh, Herschel grabs Ganon by the back of the coat as he slides <laughs> down. He's like, I gotcha. And then he helps drag him back up. And it looks like everybody except Schmidt makes it. Uh, got you, Schmidt. Thanks, brother. Oh, that's right, we got plenty of success. Okay, so you guys, you know, you do some teamwork. It's like being back in boot camp, you know, have to climb over the wall and then pull the other guy up, that sort of thing. <laughs> but you guys do eventually get to the top of this mud bank with the, the help of, uh, of the, uh, what do you call it? The rope. Rope. And you are rewarded with a new map. Ooh. Can everyone see the map? Yeah, I see a lot of weed plants. Okay, so you guys <laughs> are... Yeah, they look kind of like weed plants, don't they? <laughs> he's going he's gonna to start looking around to maybe farm some <laughs> contraband. Yep. I was like, oh no, Tagar's here. What do I do? Look over there, Tagar. I guess we're going to have to smoke these to get him out of the way. It's the only way, Sarge. <laughs> Medicinal. It's, uh, oh, God, I said it was okay. Right, going to be up. sure. Yeah. Well, God, it was okay, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a stress reliever, okay? <laughs> Medical marijuana. All right, where but is... But your initiative is, you know, two worse. <laughs> I mean, whatever, good, bad. And your observation rolls, too. <laughs> okay, oh. who am I missing? Oh, Broderick. Broderick. And Herschel. Oh, I thought I pulled... There you go. Okay. All right. So you guys are at the top of the mud bank, uh, probably right about here-ish. So it does go down. You'll have to climb down the other side. It is still rather steep. Uh, and then basically this area here, this darker color, is like basically water. And you can see there's huge plants and, and you know, plant growth and things like that. And then you can, these parts are parts of the ship that appear to be damaged and scattered all over the place. So, uh, how do you guys want to proceed? Um, the smart gun is equipped with an infrared tracking system. Does it notice anyone that might be a target? It does when not. Stand? It does not. Smart gun says it's clear, so might be okay. I'm gonna try to scout ahead, try to check the perimeter. All right, I'll need another mobility test to climb down. If you guys use the rope, we'll just assume it's straight up, so no yep. negatives. I'll use the rope. Yep. Nice. I didn't lower Ganon stress for some reason. Let's fix that. Okay. Could I... Oh, that's why his character sheet still has stress on it. That's the problem. Okay. And... There we go. Okay, let me make his mobility roll real quick here. Those special combat boots. How are you, failing? <laughs> Don't worry, Herschel's got him again. <laughs> Herschel to the rescue. Um, I would like to use my uh, stunt to give me a plus one modifier on uh, this test next time, I think is what it says. Okay. No problem. Yeah, so that way I can stop rolling only four dice. Yeah, you see uh, this time uh, Herschel grabs him by the back of the collar as he's going past him to make sure he doesn't go <laughs> face first. And... Uh, he, Ganon is just so flustered and annoyed. He, his his nice boots and all of his clothes just covered in mud and sweat and grime. I mean, you all are, but he looks impressively out of place and a bit disastrous. So you guys make it down to the uh, the wreck here, and as you can see on the map, 
this is the main part of the ship. This lower half here, the southern part, basically from left to right, is submerged under the mud and the water. The part that's on the map is the part that's out of the water. Uh, it looks like this is the front end of the ship, uh, which is... Is it the aft? Or is that the rear of the ship? I always forget. I think the four? The four, I think, front? yeah. The aft is the rear. So this is the rear of the ship. You can see one of the thrusters right here. Let me make sure. Is that marked on the map? Oh, here, I'll mark this off for you. So you can see this is one of the thrusters right here. And then you can see this thing over here is one of the rail guns from the ship. And Are again, we able to see it's massive. the bridge currently? Uh, it looks like it's probably under the mud bank. It's probably somewhere here-ish. Do we yeah. see any kind of entrances we can make our way into? Not from where you are standing, no. Well, I guess we'll keep the jungle music, but we're going to add a little bit of music to this, too. Oh, I can only do one at a time? Come on, game. What is that? All right. Uh, as do multiple. Uh, yeah, well, they're, in the, they're in a different playlist. That's why it's messed up. Okay. As you were. Are we able to see a significant amount of structural damage on the ship, or does it look more or less relatively intact? Um, it's a mix. Like I said, any of these things here that don't look like the plants are sure. parts of the ship. Shrapnel, wreckage, bulkheads, metal pieces, things like that. Uh, do we see any bodies? You do not. That's a good sign. Yep. Is it? Or did they just get eaten by the plants? <laughs> Too soon, bro. Well, um, we only saw one human skull, so probably not, right? Uh, fair enough. But don't go saying shit that makes people uncomfortable and scared. What are you doing? That's what's fun about it. Oh, okay. Hard to disagree, but okay. All right, well, you guys are all down here at this point, we'll say, to the ground level. I'm going to put Weaver by Tagar, since you're dragging her. All right, what does everybody do? Yeah, we're all sneaking our scouting head. And I'm just going to scan, you know, around for any near duels who want to ambush us again. Okay, why don't you give me an observation roll? <laughs> Would you like to use the word near duel? I want to make sure that me and Weaver are opportunity. some sort of cover. Yeah, there's plenty of spots to take cover. Uh, Herschel is uh, standing near you as well, Tagar. You can tell he's he's trying to watch over Weaver as well. Um, and you've been kind of chatting up Ganon a little bit, so he's probably standing near you, Tagar. You, you like, after you tried to help him out a little bit earlier with the stamina test. Well, Last session, do we... Uh, do we confirm or deny? Because I know the magnetic interference messes up our comms, but our close proximity comms are messed up too. Do we know? Um, I believe those work. Best test. Right. <laughs> we'll go with yes. Okay, then yes. Yes, yeah, I'll scan. Okay. I wouldn't go out of that. All right. So, Broderick, you take up a position, maybe, like, at the base of the hill, but a couple feet up, just so you have a little bit of elevated position, so you're not in the water. The water is about knee-deep in most places, some places only ankle-deep. Um, you're keeping an eye out, you don't see anything, and O'Connell begins to sneak through. So, O'Connell, as you're making your way through this, all right, all this nasty kind of swamp, uh, there is... Your, your, your clothes are constantly getting stuck on some of these plants you have to walk by. You see that they have these little, like, almost U-shaped hooks uh, that keep tearing into your clothes, and you keep getting stuck, and uh, you have to rip, rip them out. Your clothes are just kind of getting shredded. Um, but uh, 
If you'd like, give me an observation test as you are scouting ahead. I'll relay that to you guys. Got some tough foliage down here that's tearing me up pretty good. Nope. Too occupied. My my cool clothes are getting messed up. All right. Oh um, my god, it's not five thousand dollar boots. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we're aware, the smart gun costs six thousand dollars. So. Is it really? Yeah. I mean, it is like a minigun, basically. Uh, uh, you know, AI controlled smart minigun. Okay. Uh, I, I feel like there was a chart you're supposed to roll here. Um, but I'm trying to find where that chart is. So discuss amongst yourselves for a moment. Um, oh, while you guys are standing here, uh, Ganon, uh, looks to you, Tegar. Um, you weren't here last session, but he has the, uh, the pups, the mapping device. And so he's got this case, which is now coated in mud. Uh, but he says, um, I could take the pups out and see if they can find a way into the ship and start mapping it for us. Yeah, uh, try and uh, stay over here by me and Herschel, and uh, we'll we'll keep a lookout. He says, "All right," and uh, so he he opens up the. Uh, you see, he puts his PDAT away, like tries to put it somewhere safe where you know, he won't lose it, and uh, he takes like extra care of that, and then he opens the case. Uh, he like can't find a place to put it, and he asks Herschel to like hold the case while he opens it. And you see, he takes out these two spherical metal objects. Um, did you see Prometheus? Yeah. Okay, so it's those little orbs that float around and they do the scanning with the, the 3D uh, red lasers. And then they give okay. you like a 3D scan. So you see he starts to press them and press the buttons to activate them. And then he holds them. And then they both start to float out of his hands. And you see that he goes to like a little control panel in the briefcase. And he's like telling them what to do. And they start to kind of zoom over towards the wreck. And you can see this, the visible, you can see this visible aura of the red lights. They maybe, you know, they start off maybe about a meter away, like in all directions, and it starts to expand a little bit. And then when it when it hits something, you see it, like it, it coats it. And so they get to the ship and they start scanning the outside to try to find uh, an entrance. So they're doing that for now. Um... O'Connell, you had two successes. Uh, I still... Where the fuck is this thing? Here we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> basically, to make this simple, uh, they split the crash site into four quadrants. It'll take about a turn to search each quadrant, if you'd like. Uh... One person can make an observation test. Uh, everybody else can uh, can assist. And this is a test where you can have more than three assists because it's such a large area. And then if you do, there's things you might find. Uh, it depends how long you guys want to do that. So O'Connell will assume you go off on your own for the first one. Okay. You do get a success here, so please roll me 2d6. See what you discover. What'd you get? One and a five. Uh, six? Okay. Uh, so what you discover, you see floating in the water. <clears throat> you think maybe at first it might be a fuel canister or oxygen tank or something. And you like kick it with your foot to turn it. And you see that it is a water, water tank. It looks completely untouched and undamaged. Uh, you're guessing it's probably from the ship's stores, it's probably got fresh, clean water in it. I'll pull it out and relay to the others what I found. And then you wipe off some of the mud, and, uh, yeah, for sure. Thank God. Fresh water. Oh, did you guys not bring a bunch of canteens? Nope. Was well, I mean... Item. Well, we brought supplies with us, but they blew up in the drop ship. In the drop ship in the, in the burning inferno back there. Yeah. Oh, you just store your canteen in like a box at the drop ship? 
Is that well, standard ops? I believe that stuff is in your individual marine pack. I thought, but that's it's been a joke. I know. <laughs> Why read the items in your inventory? Who knows? You don't need that. Yeah. We exist solely off of Dr. Pepper in this podcast. Yeah, exactly. I yeah, thought the flavors. food and water tallies were just for looks on her character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, O'Connell, that is the only thing that you seem to find as you make your way through this first area. The rest of the group is kind of just chilling back. How do you guys wish to proceed? We need to search each quadrant, right? If you'd like, it's up to you. There's, there's a lot of area to search, so... Well, I mean, while we're waiting for the pups, we can search, right? right? Yeah, the pups still seem like they're trying to find a way into the, the wreck. Our mission here is to search for possible survivors, so I mean... Right. Start, I start searching around the area for I signs of survivors. Okay. So, Connell, why don't you go ahead and make another roll and take some assists. Uh, Ganon's using the, the things... And we'll assume Herschel and Tagar are kind of watching over Weaver. So you can take three assists from the other guys. Unless there's something else the three of you want to do. Uh, that being Ogata, Johnson, and Schmidt. Uh, if I assist, I can still sort of be scanning the horizon. Uh, I'd say no. If you want to be on guard duty, you'll want to stay on guard duty. Yeah, I think I'll stay on guard duty. Okay. So take two assists then, uh, Scar. I mean, I would spread out and search the other quadrants, is what I would do. Oh, so you want to try to speed things up? Sure. Okay. All right. So we'll just, we'll put you in the lower quadrant over here. Okay. Uh, you guys have already searched this one. O'Connell, you're over here. And then, uh, Schmidt, who are you assisting? Uh, I'll assist Ogata. Okay, so we'll put you over here. And then, uh, Johnson, where do you, where do you put yourself up? Um, is there a place that I can see both groups of people who are trying to do, like, searches? If you climbed back up on top of the hill, you could. Okay. And I just need a mobility for that? Yeah, but this will be at negative two because nobody's at the top holding the rope anymore. Um, and there's nothing to attach the rope to. So, cool. Um, <laughs> I would be rolling one dice, hey, man. Plus my one stress. Just push it. There's a thirty-three percent chance of success, right? And just remember, you have to come back down. That's the easy part. <laughs> I just guess. You don't have oh. to roll that if you don't want to. You just slide. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do have that. Your falling damage charge. isn't that bad. Yeah, yeah. I don't trust Chris with falling damage, so I'm I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Um, there's two people on that side, so I'll stay where I am over here and just kind of try to observe and scan with my infrared tracking. Okay, we'll assume you guys are, like, kind of slowly moving, you know, to keep an eye on O'Connell, at least. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so O'Connell and then Ogata, you can make an observation with a plus one, because you got Schmidt helping you out. Hey. I got one success. I, uh, I do want to... Go ahead, Scar. I, 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 at this point now, I'm kind of deep in. I wanted to go ahead and try to use a motion tracker as well. Okay. Go ahead. Give me a power roll. All right. This is excellent. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, nice. That's uh, it, son. So you pull out the motion tracker at this point, and you are getting all sorts of bits of movement here and there. Um... And you're looking around, you don't you don't see anything. Uh, you're guessing it's probably like local fauna or something. Does it pick up like bugs? Not bugs, but anything that was bigger. Um, like squirrel sized or bigger? Probably, yeah, like little little critters. Uh, Most and, mostly worried about the wreck. No, there doesn't seem anything coming from the wreck. So O'Connell is your searching. Uh, roll me both both of you, Okana, and, Okana, O'Connell and Ogata. Please roll me 
Uh, 2d6. Uh, okay. Four for me. Nine. Plus one for me. Okay. Uh. Okay. Ogata, over where you and Schmidt are, you guys find what looks like some sort of tank submerged in the mud. You guys start looking around and clean it off. You realize it's probably some sort of oil canister or fuel canister. Um, it looks intact. You're guessing maybe it's like some sort of fuel, maybe for some of the, the machinery on the ship. Uh, O'Connell, you discover over here you find uh, you find two things. First, you see something that's covered in vines and wrapped up in shrubbery. And when you get closer, you see the shine, the glint of metal or glass. And when you take a closer look, you can see it is the visor of a helmet and you realize it's a helmet of a compression suit. Compression suit is wrapped in these same vines that Johnson saw not too long ago. It is an in mostly intact suit. It's got lots of holes and stuff, though. Uh, it's still in one piece. But you see inside is an almost completely bare, stripped skeleton of a human. Wonderful. Is there... Are there dog tags still somewhere? You'd have to dig through it. It's wrapped up pretty tight. Okay, before I do that... Got a body over here, Saj. I'm gonna try to see if it's got tags on it still. Okay. Roger that. Be careful. Alright. The other thing you notice is in this bush here... Uh... Okay, you see, um, as you're scanning with the motion tracker, you see a bunch, as you go through this bush, you see a bunch of shapes go, like, crawling out. And you see these critters, they are about the size of a fist, like a baseball, and they're these weird brownish-orange-colored bugs. Uh, they've got kind of like a green back, like a turquoise back. Looks like a cross between like a, like a lobster and, I don't know, like a cockroach. But some obviously alien little critter. Uh, you see a swarm of these things, like scurry, as you, as you search. And that's what's setting off your motion tracker right now. They don't attack you or anything, but maybe they crawl over you, it's kind of creepy. Uh, but they eventually go away. And you see, in the bush, there is an intact cryopod. Well, yeah, I would uh, stop trying to get tags off the body and <laughs> search that. All right. So you look and uh, you, you brush some of the mud off and what you thought was an intact cryopod is unfortunately a cryopod that's been cracked open. You can see on the other side, there's some damage. You see that the cryopod itself is about half submerged. The inside of it is flooded now that you move some of the, the mud out of the way. And uh, there is a body inside that appears to be wearing some sort of jumpsuit. It's hard to tell. It's so coated in filth. Uh, this body, much like the other one, is skeletal. There's no flesh or muscle left on it. And you notice that the rib cage has been damaged and shattered in some way. Matt's fucking reaction. Gave me... You're going to gain a plus one stress from that when you 
That's a little more gruesome. Grand. Uh, you also notice this does not appear to be a UA hypersleep pod. Oh no, I'm sorry. It is a U. It is a UA hypersleep pod. My mistake. I misread my notes. Um, I report that on up the COC, and yeah, on both of them, try to get identification if any. There's nothing on the guy in the pod. If you want to search the one in the vines, I will need a... Let's see. Well, you tell me, how do you try to get this thing apart? Because it is wrapped up tight. You're going to have to remove some of these vines to get to the body. Use my knife. All right, give me a close combat roll. All right. You start, Thanks for that stress. You start cutting them. You see some of these vines that kind of ooze when you cut them. This dark, putrid color looks almost like a, like a dark red or maybe a black. It's hard to tell. And when you cut some of them, some of the others start to retreat and untangle and move away from the body. Uh, you get to this body. Um, it's an older looking compression suit. You can tell, even though it's obviously been here for a while. There are no dog tags. Does not appear to be that of a soldier. Does this guy look like he was stripped, or that he these bones are like dry, like the bones have been here a long time? Looks like they've been here for a while. So I'm narrating all this while I'm doing it, and once I'm done, I'm like, Saj, they say this happened six weeks ago? That's what the report said. That's, that's when we got the me. message. Oh, well, God, you might want to, I don't know, see if you could wanna accommodate this. I don't know. <laughs> this seems a lot older than six weeks. So the, just to make it clear, during your briefing, Casados said six weeks ago uh, the ship went down and sent out an SOS. So maybe it's been seven weeks because it took some time to get here. But it looks like it's been here way longer than that. I mean, these bones are picked clean. I want to talk to you anyway, we got you know, we'll do fine. Oh, we'll just sorry. Keep looking around. <laughs> I, I can take a look at them and see if I can determine time of death. He's like, fucking bones. carbon date your own body, bro. <laughs> carbon date, yeah, something I would need to do with an, a fully stocked science lab. But yeah, it, it's going to be hard to look at a skeleton and be like, oh yeah, he died three weeks ago. You know, but I mean, take, take a look. You can attempt hey, it. Look over the body. All right, give I'll, me a look over Give me a medical aid at minus two. Okay. You're guessing this has been here for at least a few months. Definitely not a few weeks. Yeah, this goes back way before the reported crash time. You're not sure of the cause of death on this guy? But you can tell that, obviously, the bones have been picked clean by scavenging critters. You said there's a jumpsuit, right? He's in a, uh, like a, um, a compression suit, like a space suit. Is there, like, a name tag on the suit? There is not, no. I don't suppose he has a P to add, or any signifying items? Ah. Uh... Nope, looks like probably like flight crew of some sort, you guess. Or, you know, ship ship crew. Anything else in this crowd tube other than the skeleton and the jumpsuit? Oh, I'm so okay. My mistake. The guy in the vines is in the compression suit, the space suit. The guy in the cryopod, um, it looks like a dirty, probably at one point was orange jumpsuit. Like a maintenance type suit or something. Kind of, yeah, kind of like that. Or a prison jumpsuit? Could be. 
So the 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 pod is U A. Yes. Okay, so that probably came from the ship. The compression suit does that look like a UA standard or maybe UPP? Uh, it depends. It, it's used by both, so it's just okay. it's an all I can tell you is it's an older model. Mm, Which okay. older means poor, kind of leaning towards UPP. Yeah, well, I mean, you guys don't get the top of the line shit all the time either, so <laughs> you know. True, true. You you got me there, son. Yep. Uh, still leaning towards UPP. Plus, this is this is just a hospital frigate. It's not a warship. Who cares about these people, right? The hospital people. Yeah. Hospital people. So, Gada, you're telling me it's been here for a few months at, at the minimum. Then these guys aren't the ones that send a distress signal. Best I can tell. <laughs> That's well, concerning. Yeah. Well, the, so, yeah, that smells like a trap to me. So is the, the one that's a few months old is the body in the vines, right? They both look like they've been here. Okay, so the they same both. Time. They both look. Ooh. Yeah, or for a while at least. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, Gannon. Come here, bud. How yes. you doing? Yes. I want you to be real with us. What did your corporate overlords tell you to do here? Why is an insurance guy coming to a wreck that looks like months old? Well, because they want to know what caused the damage for the claims. What claims? Who's claiming this? I would assume either the UA or the company. It happens all the time. Everybody's after their money, regardless oh, of what the cause is. Okay. Did they tell you anything weird about this uh, particular vessel? Like, look at this guy, and I'll put my hand on his shoulder and lead him towards the briar pod. Dude's chest, is is it caved in or out? It is caved out. Oh, by the way, every, when everybody sees all that, everybody gains a point of stress when they see the two bodies and everything. Um, cool. If you haven't already. And yeah, you like, like see, so like, bring a, a Ganon over, and he's like, ah, you know, like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Um, that, look, that, that exploded. How? I don't know what the fuck does that to someone. What? Ask your you medic? Ask I don't know. I'm asking you because I don't like big corporations like Wei Yu. And I feel like something shady's going on. Well, I'm... I, I knew I liked you, John. Sorry hey. for your <laughs> precognition of disposition towards people of my standing, but I, I'm i here you just like you are. Work, but they don't make you sound smart. He looks okay. to you, Tagar, like, please help. You're the only one who's been nice to me so far. Uh, it's clear whatever's happening here. We don't have the full story. And this right. six-week thing, seven-week thing, doesn't add up to what we're seeing here. We're seeing months here. This distress yeah. signal came late. Whoever sent it was probably not part of the ship and it originally came down. It's been here way longer than this. Right. So, either way, either way, these guys are down. Let's. Sorry, call. Keep moving. Yeah, Johnson. You know, I, I, believe it or not, I'm probably gonna side with uh, old uh, pencil push over here. If uh, anything funny was going on, they probably wouldn't put this idiot down here in an active combat zone. You're not wrong. And then that's I... also why we're here with him. He's a super expendable property. Yeah, well, I don't know. They might, I mean, I figured they probably would want us to retrieve his shoes more than him if anything happens. Yeah. <laughs> shoes are worth more than his own body. God, that must be horrible, Kevin. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> so we yeah. all agree this is like some kind of setup, yeah? A trap? We're this, probably this, walking into a trap, yeah. Very likely. It smells like a trap. I mean, yeah. considering the second we entered atmosphere, we're already getting shot at by UPP. Like, yeah, this is... In. Random yeah. and, villagers coming and, to I mean, in. I mean, and that's why they send us... Down, they again. send us in for a fight. I mean, we, we knew going in this. And they want us to blow up the whole ship. You guys would all know that's, that is standard operating procedure for something okay. like this. Because you don't, you, you don't want your enemies getting a hold of your shit if you can't get it out yourself or fix it. And you're not... Unless you spend a lot of time and money... You're not getting in a full wreck of a starship off of a planet anytime soon. Okay. I rescind that statement. So, but, um, 
you're all standing there. You hear uh, Herschel. He says, oh, no. uh, um, I found, uh, uh, it looks like I've found something. And you guys see he's, uh, he's looking at a part of the ship. And you realize it says, Glory. Uh, it's the name of the ship on the side. Uh, but then you see that he starts to wipe away some of the mud on the end. And it doesn't say glory. It, well, it says more than glory. Glory hole? No. What? Damn. <laughs> what? <laughs> Gloria. Uh, Glorious. Please praise the glory. It says Ramadan. gory, actually. <laughs> oh, oh. The L is uh, actually just damage on the ship. It's just a giant metal scar. <laughs> I have to, I have to find what it what it says. Um, so with our drop ship down, do we have any plan that can get off this planet now? We can't communicate out. Well, there, there should be a communication thing on the ship. Yeah, the one of... here should hopefully be strong enough to get through atmosphere. Well, they sent a distress. Call, so. Right? It takes him a while to brush away all the mud, but it says "Glory of the Proletariat." Yeah, damn it. Glory of the what? I'm sorry. I put it in chariot. It's a UPP ship. Yeah. Um. Uh, hey. Uh. Gannon, is that your ship, the Proletariat? He like furrows his brow. He's like, no, no, that's not. So this is supposed to be the UAS Glory. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Uh, something here is definitely not adding up. And he, so this is even our job, where did right? Where we get the name of the ship from? From the distress call? Is that the only source for where the ship name was? Oh, I, that I don't know. Well, you're just a bucket of information. Saj, you know anything? <laughs> well, that would have come from Casados if we'd asked that question. <laughs> but we didn't because we don't ask questions because we're Marines. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we go in go right in first. What's that? Another donut? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> hey, put that one in the microwave for 10 seconds and it'll taste 50% better. Fuck off. I got six left or four left. <laughs> you're going to keep saying that all the way through, but okay. We're just trying to make your life better. Just trying to support my homie and his taste bud adventure. <laughs> it's got a little field so, goal post on it. But does it taste like Dr. Pepper? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> okay. Make sure you drink a little bit of water and spit it out to cleanse your palate, too. We wouldn't want you uh, thinking it's just a Dr. Pepper you're drinking. No, I, ha I have been. I have been. I got, I got the cup. Did they give you complimentary ginger to help cleanse that palate? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's move to the next <laughs> Next scene. We are beating up Gannon. <laughs> I'm holding him as his arms like this and you feel what you want. <laughs> specifically for the solar plexus to help drive out any oxygen from his lungs. Did, did Ganon find a way in with the pups? Yes, eventually. <clears throat> at the end of the ship here, there is a half-submerged airlock entrance that you discover. Did we still have one quadrant left to search? If you'd like to, yes. <clears throat> Isn't that quadrant technically in the water? Or no? Uh, it's out here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as you guys are doing this, uh, well, do you search it or are you guys going to try to get into the ship? I'm still going to be scanning just to make sure no one ambushes yeah, us. Yeah, I'll go with Ogata to search. All right. Searching. Go, go ahead and make your roll. Uh, with plus two, because we got two people in here. Is that uh, correct? If Coconnell's there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Three. Ooh. Can we All do right. it extra quick? Sure. Roll me another. If that's, uh, what, if that's what Matt. We're on our toes now. Roll me another two d six, please. Sure. Eight. <clears throat> okay. Excuse me. So you find uh, some personal effects. 
scattered about. And eventually, you find a briefcase. Metal briefcase appears to still be sealed, floating around in the water. Uh, I dare go in the water. Um, How far out out into the water? I mean, you guys have all been wading through water this whole time. Oh, we have? Oh, this whole dark water. gray area is all water. Oh, I obviously Come this have high, high, high combat boots. <laughs> I go and, and grab the briefcase. Okay. Yeah, you grab it. No problem. Is it locked? Uh, yeah, but it's a little cheap metal thing. Easy enough to break okay. open if you want. Uh, I will uh, open it up. Okay, so there's a few more personal effects inside. Uh, various stuff, but... About a whole stack of actual paper money pours out. It is UPP rupees. It is not American dollars. But do we get the experience point for it is the question. Have you acquired money? (laughs) Yes, we finally got it. We got money. Good. And Ogata, hey. since you since you had so many successes, we'll say that you have a, a moment of math genius. Count it up. It's about seventy thousand UPP rupees, which is uh, about seven hundred and thirty bucks in UA dollars. Oh well, that's garbage. <laughs> hey, that's hey, more than a week pay. The most money we've made in a long time. But so, you know. probably about half of that is already soaked as it pours out. But yeah. A st- it's a suitcase full of money. Suitcase full of pistols and money. <laughs> Remember that? I do. Left for dead. Uh, uh, well, we're getting paid today. Uh, wow. <laughs> May not be from our employer, but we're getting paid. Well, you know, there's only three, two of us over here, you know, or th- three of us with the Clano. You know, I think it's fair that we split it and the other guys can fuck off. You schmucks know you're on the open channel, right? Wow. <laughs> someone's, a sleeper, someone's a sleeper agent. <laughs> Sarge, well, what Schmidt, that? Schmidt, you know, clearly we've all been going through the shit here today. We've all been attacked, crashed, shot at, nearly killed. You know, vines trying to pull us under. And we're sweating and tired. You know, I think we've all earned a few bucks. You may not think so, but I think so. I think we're all getting the cut. Maybe you're not getting the cut. Maybe I'll, everyone else will get the cut. Damn. As you guys are discussing the first money apparently you've all ever seen in your lives, uh, <laughs> you hear and then see a ship go screeching overhead past you guys. Hey, can we get inside the, the, the wreck now? You. Probably about the size of either the dropship or the MIG. Definitely was the dropship. <laughs> get in. I mean, it could be another glory. dropship. Let's go find the hole of the glory <laughs> and get in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I just wanted to be stated for the record, I did not come up with these names, okay? <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, it's point towards the opening. It's the glory hole. I get it. <laughs> Amazing. So the ship turns around and opens oh, fire with rear. tactical <laughs> missiles. And you all disappear in a blaze of glory. <laughs> oh, he's like the thing. And it's so hot. <laughs> okay. You get to the airlock door, and uh, it is currently locked. Well, closed, I should say. Looks like there is no power, obviously. Uh, How do you want to get in? Uh, So Uh, since there's no power, contact wouldn't work, I imagine? No. You have Got to get power sword. Jack. Okay. Give me a heavy machinery roll, please. Minus one. Uh, can I assist? Do I get it to just uh, make more? Was it uh, heavy machinery? Because I get plus one for using the maintenance jack. 
because of my event. Well, that gives you plus one, and then it's minus one because it's been here for so long, it's going to be harder to open than normal. Uh-oh. Did we freeze? Everybody's crashing. Oh, no. What the fuck? Anybody else that have huge leg? Oh, yeah. yeah, I had oh, yeah. Terrible yeah. Leg. Big I leg spike. Sewers must have shit the bed for a sec. Oh, Jesus. Oh, everybody's back. Everybody's back in the right spot, too. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> So, sorry, I, I, you cut out for me when you were discussing about the... Uh, it's, it's... Well, yeah, you get the bonus from using your maintenance jack, and it's minus one because this has been here for so long that it's going to be harder than normal to open. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Um, can we assist if we don't have training in the skill? Yes. Okay, I'll definitely assist. Yeah, right. I, I've, I've got a... Um, I don't think a winch would help, right? No. Uh, probably not. No. No. And then electric, electronic tools are only useful if, if it has power. So, yep, uh, I'll just assist normally. Okay. So, plus two? Uh, plus two and then minus one from the, the penalty. <laughs> hey, nice. nice. There we All go. Right. It's a lot of work, but uh, you crack open the door... And it is heavy, it is rusted, it is waterlogged, but slowly the two of you start to force this thing open. The pups zip inside. You see they start to map out everything. And uh, Ganon says, oh, okay, they're, uh, they're, they're starting to pick things up. And you see he's, he's looking at the control panel now. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this takes a good, like, five minutes to get this thing open. It is, it is like I said, it's, I mean, it's a big-ass door, right? But you do eventually uh, break it open, and you get inside. Um, everybody, please give me an observation test. Straight up? Yes. So many good rolls. All right. Uh, for those of you that passed, did anybody have more than one success? Uh, for those of you that passed, which is two people, I think, you, um, you can hear in the distance the sound of that ship. And, uh, oh, we've got a stress, but you're okay. Okay, so, Tagar, uh, you guys all who pass, you hear the ship in the distance. It's clearly coming back around for another pass. Um, Tagar, you see it. And uh, you actually catch a glimpse of it as everybody's starting to make their way into the, uh, the ship. And you see that it's stopped in the distance, and it's obviously setting down uh, nearby. You can't quite make out what type of ship it is, though. It's too far away. Hey, somebody might be headed this way. I mean, they, you, you are sure there's no way they missed the wreck. From based on how far away they are, there's no way. They're they're definitely landing out in the clearing. So do we want to wait and ambush them, or set up like a booby trap on the door so when they come through it explodes? Oh, O'Connell's got some goodies for them then. We're assuming hostile then, I guess. I mean, yeah, why not? I was gonna huh. say that's what. Yeah. Unless the UA sent another ship down after us, which they wouldn't have known we crashed. Yeah. If they yeah. can't contact us, would they send a... Well, they, they knew they wouldn't be able to contact us unless uh, Weaver went above atmosphere. Well, well you guys... Hopefully we'll be able to contact them so within the ship here in a second. The, the, the thought was that she would drop you guys off at the ship, and then she would stay airborne and keep going between orbit and uh, you know, out of orbit and in of orbit to keep you guys in contact with the Tambatam. 
Okay. So, so it, it definitely they, shouldn't have taken this long. So, so they, it is possible they, they were expecting another ship. So if they were expecting us, con expecting contact from us, or from Weaver. They definitely might have sent another ship. I mean, no one, no one told you how long, so you're not sure, but eventually they would. All right. Uh, we get to set up, set up an ambush if anybody comes out. We could two stay down here, watch the door while somebody finds comms. Uh, I can stay back and I can stay back and watch doors. Uh, we definitely need O'Connell with comms to get out there. So we should probably not split up. Why? You say you you guys go in the wreck, or some of us go in the wreck. I can set a claim wall outside the door and set up out in the distance and keep an eye on it. If it's friendlies, I'll holler them down before they blow up. If it's not, then they blow up, and you guys will know from the explosion that yeah, we got a hostile situation. We wouldn't be able to like get to you in time, right? You'd be fighting a squad of dudes. Why not we just all uh -huh. camp out here? I think I saw a real gun on that ship. Pointing in the opposite direction. We we might need whatever ship they just landed to get off this planet. Maybe. It could be the only ticket out of here. Yeah. Also not looking to get my ass chewed out if we actually kill some allies. Yeah, so maybe and set up an ambush and then wait for the show and if they're allies, we don't shoot them and we hail them down. And if yeah. they're not allies, we have a new ship. We shred them, and we take their ship. Yep. Thanks. Then we get out of here. You Yo, know about um, how far they landed their uh, Tagar? You know about how many clicks? No, didn't have enough successes. It's about a clickety clack away. <laughs> so we might want to make sure we're all clear in here before we uh, set up a ambush. Right. Can we set up some barricades? Maybe something to like slow them down if they do get on the ship. Uh, I mean, there's probably detrius and debris out here that you guys could use. Um, at this point, the uh, the pups would uh, have probably mapped out about half the ship. So um, I can't see anything. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to change it. I just meant to to switch over to to see. So, the, um... Uh, hold on, what's going on here? The back of the ship, it's one long corridor, <clears throat> and it runs for about a quarter of the ship. And then it splits into a T-intersection. Left and right and forward. Uh, to the right, it seems to end where the ship is submerged, so it looks like the pup can't go any further. Uh, the center and left, it looks like the center hallway goes all the way towards the front of the ship. And the hallway on the left uh, wraps around and goes towards at least two-thirds towards the front of the ship. And uh, there's several rooms uh, that it's finding uh, on the way there. Looks like the left side of the ship is uh, bunks, uh, like rooms for crew. And it looks like the two rooms that you're going to come upon first towards the back of the ship appear to be cargo holds. Uh, it also appears to be a workshop and a uh, power station up ahead past the, uh, the the cargo holds. That's about as far as they've gotten, though. Do we want to set up an ambush in the ship or outside the ship? Out in the jungle. I think inside would be best, because then they have one access point to get in, and we can funnel them. Assuming... Be trapped in here. Yeah, assuming they don't have any explosives. Like a rocket launcher. Hmm. I mean, it's fair, but then they also risk destroying parts of the ship they may need to, uh... recover for their own needs. You assume they care. <laughs> we don't know. Uh. At the end of the day, I was kind of, I was kind of thinking of a, you know, combination maybe, Saj. You know, if we start shooting them from the outside, they might try to take cover inside the ship. Then anybody who's inside the ship can start shooting them from there as well. They'll be stuck between 
rock in a hot place. All right, so maybe booby trap the inside of the chip door, leave it just a little bit of jar so it looks like they could get in. And, you know, a couple of us stay outside, some of us stay inside, right? All right, we could do that. All right. Call inside. I, I, I will be outside with my smart gun and RPG. I'll be outside because I can, I can hide well. I'll go outside with you. Everyone right. else inside? Who's going in then? Everybody else? I'm in. And, uh, yeah, I'm in. Someone take a claim. I'll head inside. All right. Booby trap. I so I'm I'm gonna add the the new map. Um, I might have to do some token work, so we probably won't worry about it. Cause we're at the end of the, the night here, um, because there's very low light and it's a big ship. Um, so we'll I'll, but I'll add it so we have it to the. Uh, you guys can switch between those, and I'll um, I'll just make a note here for for next time. So who's going inside? I am. Can, can I take Weaver inside and find like her yes. somewhere to like let yep. her? Let's do this. Whoever's uh, staying outside, uh, put your tokens over here by this big tree. Whoever's going inside, put your tokens by the airlock. All right, for those of you staying outside, please give me uh, a mobility test for stealth. Plus one from the previous mobility test. Get one success. I will push. Yeah, I think I'm going to oh. push as well. <laughs> Shouldn't that have added one extra stress dice? It, uh, it should have, yes. That's weird. Oh my god. It shows yeah. you have three stress, though, on your on your sheet. Yeah. Um, I'll just roll another d6. D6. Oh! Nice. Clutch! Oh, nice! Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, it seems like I will have to give that to our sergeant. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I'm changing, I'm changing my buddy and rival now. <laughs> As you should. Fucking O'Connell saved my life and Schmidt's making it harder. Okay. If you guys would position yourselves on the map where you want to be, um, so that I know where you guys are standing if anybody shows up. Uh, yeah. The three of you are standing like, outside. Is there like some brush or something over here where I can. This hide whole, yeah, this whole area is filled with shrubbery and these bushes and trees and debris. Is so. there, like, an elevated position I can take? Not unless you get out of the water. Can we get out of the water? <laughs> you can, but there's less... Especially on this side of the mud bank, there's less cover. There's more cover in the water with the bushes and stuff. Okay, well, if those two are on this side, I'll be, uh... Over oh, shooting. Okay. Okay. All right, and I heard something about setting a booby trap. Are you still doing that? Yeah, from inside the ship, on the, just like uh, Johnson said, I, I set up a claymore okay. uh, and keep the door slightly ajar so as soon as they open that. All right, so you put it like, like on the inside of the door, basically? Right. Gotcha. Okay, and then what is everyone inside the ship doing? How are you guys positioning yourselves? Uh, I'm going to try and set that up. Um, like um, ground debris. So like, if hostiles come in, they like have to like move around or like unsteady ground, and then set up like kind of like a like a cover for us to like um, set behind. Okay, Ogata, what are you doing? Um, in the cargo hold of the ship. Is there any actual cargo in the cargo hold? Uh, do you go to the one on the left or right-hand side? The starboard or the port side? Uh, left. Not in the water. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll deal with the map next week. So, you make your way down the hall. There's no power. It's pitch black in here, so you gotta turn on your shoulder lamp. And you're slushing through water. Again, it's anywhere from, like, ankle to thigh-high water, depending where you are. 
and uh, you get to pass the, the T-intersection, and so then now you're going down this hall, and the cargo holds are on either side. The doors are about midway uh, through this hallway on either side. They're right across from each other. You gonna say something? Uh, yeah, I thought the cargo hold was in the back of the ship. Um, okay. But it, it um, is. It's, it's the back half of the ship. But you have okay. to go down this long hallway before you get to it. Didn't we enter from the back of the ship? Yes. Do so you have to go down the long hall to get to the back of the ship that we came from? No, you have to go down a long hallway, and then the first like rooms you come to are the cargo holds. And that's okay. as far as the pups have searched, and okay. that's like two-thirds of the ship. I'm sorry, okay. it's a third of the ship. It's the back third of the ship that they've explored so far. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'll cautiously and slowly check out the cargo hold. Just okay. to see if there's something there. Okay. Uh, where are we? There's going to be a chest burster in here. <laughs> I was gonna say, you're about to get I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. So the the main hallway you come through, on the right and left, it's the engines. So there's nothing to go into. It's just solid ship basically. So you have to get past the engines before you get to the actual like open parts of the ship. Um, so you make your way towards the uh, the door, and then what are you having Ganon and uh, Herschel do? Uh, have Herschel watch over Weaver. Okay, I'll definitely do that. Um, I mean, right now, Ganon's just standing nearby, making sure the pups are doing their thing and keeping track of them. Yeah, just kind of like watch our backs, make sure nothing comes up behind us, and keep an eye on the pups, I guess. Okay. All right. Ogata, when you're going through the water here, you need to make an observation test. Easy. Nicely done. Uh, your light shines ahead. You see something splash in the water. You see another something splash in the water. You can see two things in the water coming towards you very fast. You shine your light, and you see some sort of little critter, it for lack of a better term you know those fucking things you always see like in your bathtub or sinks? Those long ass... Like centipede looking things. Centipede silverfish. things. Silverfish. Yeah. It looks like that. Uh, no. What? But it's uh, well you'll see in a second. Um, yeah. It's uh, um, it looks like a silverfish but it's kind of a yellowish brown color and it's about a meter in length. Looks kind of like this. A little something like a this. Oh god, it's terrifying. Oh, a Ugh. meter? Yeah, it's about three feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, god. Uh, no, that's some nightmare fuel. <laughs> it is. Um. I think you should take a point of stress when you see that, because it's... Yeah, it's fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I accept that. I mean, some people take a point of stress when they see a real one in their bathtub, and it's, like, that big. So, just the sheer size of it is like, oh my. Uh, so that's what you see coming at you. Outside, would my three marines please give us uh, observation rolls? I, mean, I, I guess I can. I guess optional. You're obviously trying to <laughs> spot these guys. Oh no! Adam, the dice just are not on your side tonight, oh, man. I'm no. too bad. Bro, what the fuck? Okay, what how do we got? Roll, how did I roll a nine? Six plus three. Yeah, That's super cool. That equals nine. Um. I, yeah, I, get, I must have rolled to six. Super cool. Uh, but I got one success, gay. Okay. Uh, God damn it, Schmidt. <laughs> so many dice. <laughs> All right. O'Connell and Johnson, you hear 
and then see coming uh, over the hill. Um, and I'm going to roll to see where they are appearing from here. All right, so Johnson, they are appearing from over in this direction, coming south towards you, towards the cryopod. Like, so they, they come, like, over the hill, okay? Uh, O'Connell, you can see them from where you are. Schmidt, maybe the way you're in cover, you can't quite get a direct line of sight to them. Johnson, you hear them first. O'Connell probably doesn't hear them, but he sees them. You see there is six figures coming over the hill, humanoids. Uh, you can tell they are armed. They are wearing armor, and they are a squad of UPP Space Operating Force Commandos. Johnson, you realize they're on this side of the hill where you're by yourself. Yeah. And that's where you freak out a little bit, and you drop something that makes an audible splash. The mic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, something something drops, and you make a splash, and they turn in your direction. And that is where we'll call it for tonight. Oh, God. I, I have dropped so many things on this fucking mission. The rolls tonight. Hey. Yeah, yeah I don't what, think what do you have left to lose? Yes. The winch, uh, the tools, I, the winch, the tools. Uh, you could my use the rocket generator right and right? my RPG. I don't think your guns would would get lost here. Um, then it would be the tools of the winch. Because you're you're sitting still, right? So like, yeah, it's something small. I think that you're probably like half submerged in water. So like maybe it's like disconnected, and then like. By the time you realize it's like it's gone somewhere under the water, so we'll just roll here. Uh, we'll do a D three or a uh, high low. Uh, low will be the tools. High will be the winch. The tools. Okay. Uh, perhaps they've gotten so soaked that they don't work anymore. Okay. And you are in the sights of an SOF squad. GG. As they say. And Schmidt is just fucking lollygagging and big rip. Look, big looking rip. at fucking shit on the ground. Yep. Oh, oh, no fish. Looking for everything you drop. Yeah. Well, thanks, Jay. Go put yourself. Here, I'll put the dudes over here. And I was just. Man, I was gonna say, should we stick together for the ambush? And I just. I no. didn't. No, we always split up. That's always the best idea, splitting up. You all know that, obviously. You want then, they can, then they can only take out them. one at a time. <laughs> it's fine, you know? Just Johnson just needs to go Rambo. Okay? Dude, all you gotta do is survive six attacks. You'll be fine. Yeah. Is Cruz feeling better? How long Cruise can you hold your breath? Wait. Cruz, we need you down here. Well... Just from, from the ship, just... <laughs> That's all we got for you tonight, folks. Join us next week for part three of Blaze of Glory. Uh, it might be a Blaze of Glory for some of the, the PCs here. We'll see what happens as uh, the UPP have arrived. So, uh, and then ogata has got to deal with giant silverfish. So, we will see you. Same time, same place. Signing off.